makes this blur. Anyway, mm -hmm. wait, I keep trying to de delete your old token and it keeps reappearing. It was very strange. Oh, that is weird. It was just like, no, you must play this character. <laughs> uh, right, cool. I should have had my notes open straight away, but I'm really lazy. Okay, so as everyone already knows, we're starting in the island of, why have I forgotten this? Hobbico. Uh, Horbico is one of many islands in this seemingly endless world of archipelagos. It's not a world that people have circumnavigated, so it could be flat, who knows. Uh, all that people know really is that the majority of people in the world call it the Sapphirus Expanse. Um, being loads and loads of archipelagos means that there's no main... Uh, like kingdoms and factions, islands that are t uh, quite close together do tend to, you know, kind of unite in their own little uh, minor factions, but there's no like major kingdoms that will govern or decide the rules for anything. It is all just kind of wherever you are, that's what the law is. So you're always going to have to keep your wits about in terms of that. And the session it starts itself starts in the Salted Herring, a large tavern in the port district of Horbico. Uh, for, reg for regulars of the island, you'll know that the tavern is busy pretty much around the clock and constantly filled with a variety of smugglers, traders, slavers, mercenaries, adventurers, and, of course, pirates. Where your characters are in the tavern is completely up to you, and why they're in the tavern and on this island is also completely up to you. Right now, there is one... Uh, if you're a regular to this tavern, you'll know him, uh, w whether by reputation or by name, who is no just known as Rin, R-Y-N-N. And he's holding court, telling stories of his latest adventure. He's talking about the fact that he went to the Giant Isles, known for their variety of giants, not the fact that the islands are particularly large. Um... And how he's, you know, stolen a horde and blah, blah, blah. He's just telling his stories. Whether it's true or not is obviously up for debate. Because all of his crew seems to never actually be there at the tavern. He says they just stay on the ship. But anyway, let's go around the virtual table and get a description of our four characters. If you, um, as I come to you, just, you know, give a brief description of what your character looks like, any obvious weapons, so he any anything that people will be able to see just by looking at you, describe that. But if you say, for example, have a dagger hidden up your bum, you don't need to tell us that because, well, <laughs> no one can tell unless they inspect your bum. So let's start with uh, Al, or should I say Otankin? Well, he is a six foot three, skinny as all hell, tiefling. Dark gray skin, except the left side of his face is alabaster white. So is the hair on that side, and his horn is broken on that side as well. And he's just wearing fairly nice clothes. A lot of straps. But other than that, fairly standard, just no obvious weapons. Little talisman around his neck. Nothing too special about him beyond that. Mm -hmm. And uh, where is he in the tavern? And is he with anyone? What's he doing? Alone at the bar, just sipping on a drink. Okay. And Fancy Foot. <laughs> oh, she is a half elf. Um, I haven't fully decided on appearance, but she's around. Uh, she's around five six, kind of like average height in between, where like. Short for an elf, a little tall for a human woman, you know. Um, and she has two short swords, one on each hip. Uh, she's very clearly armed. Um, she is at a table with um, a lot of other people that kind of look similar to her, all pretty heavily armed, um, very loud, lots of drinks. They are they are having a good time. Okay. And, uh, Emlyn. Oh, God. Um... 
Emlyn is a, a is a merfolk. Um, so, picture if you're familiar with Wow or Hearthstone or whatever. Picture a naga, kind of like that, sort of humanoid torso, long serpentine tail, basically. Um, she's fairly plainly dressed, um, carrying carrying a quarter staff. Um, She's here looking for information, mainly. Okay. So do, do you mean that she is actively asking around the bar? Yeah, sort of looking for leads on, on her mission, basically, yeah. Stop spawning tokens, whoever's doing that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to stab you all. Giblig. Uh, Like, th- three foot four, although he tells everyone he's three foot five. Uh, he's wearing <laughs> this weird plate armor that is quite thick and blue with like gold trims on it that looks fairly alien. He's got a, a, a what he considers to be a halberd on his back but looks more like a longsword. Well, it's more th- the length of a longsword. And he's got a shield on his arm. He's already ordered a drink at the bar and is desperately trying to climb up the bar stool to get to it. Uh, but he's his legs are too short and his arms quite quite reach. So he's he's almost pushed the chair on top of him accidentally, and he's just trying to throw it back over to the other side so he can use the momentum to prop himself up onto it, uh, but not doing particularly well in any of it. Okay, and you said uh, what were the weapons you said he had? Uh, halberd and a shield. And with Giblig's um, unique armor, would you like to describe that? Um, it's 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 blue with gold trims, and there seem to be silver sockets down the spine, um, and what looks like black rubber in between the joints, uh, and occasionally across it there are worn silver squares that stick up out of it um but it to most people it just looks like very artistic plate armor Mm -hmm. is this a world where we're familiar with murlocs or are we just like what the fuck is this well the, the obviously since the world is so expansive um It's not surprising to see a creature or sentient creature that you haven't seen before. So Ghibli wouldn't stand out in the sense that you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's what the hell is that? But yeah, he is pretty unique. Murlocs don't tend to, you know, explore the land as much as everyone else. If you're quite a well-traveled character, you might have ran into Murlocs before. They don't tend to hang around in bars. They tend to hang around in swamps and try and throw a spear at you as as soon as you come near them. Um, So, yeah, he's 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 definitely attracted a bit of attention. But in the the salted herring, people tend to have a reasonable policy of, you know, don't ask, don't tell, don't kind of harass people, anything. So he'll be getting a lot of odd looks. But how your character reacts to him is obviously completely up to you. Okay, I'm just going to open up a, a doohickey on my side. Oh no, doohickeys. Doohickeys! Combat already! Bar fight! Bar fight. Oh, I mean, you <laughs> could start a bar fight if you wanted. I'm not going to stop you. but um... Okay, so... Emlyn, you said you're looking for information, correct? Yes. Okay, could you give me a either an investigation or persuasion check please so just roll d20 and then add your either investigation or persuasion modifier uh maybe <laughs> so you were to find, find that <laughs> in, in the chat you type slash roll or slash r then space d20 and then you can add plus and then if you look on your character sheet in your skills section the number next to it 
you type plus that into the roll, and that will give you what you want. Uh, you sorry, which number am I looking for? Either persuasion oh, or investigation, whichever one you prefer to use. Uh, they are identical. Okay, that's fine then. Um, you can also so just D20 click plus on one. one. Okay, 18. Right, okay. So how is Emmeline going about... Well, first off, what information are you trying to find? Um, My village that I hail from was attacked by raiders. It has been a recurring problem. These, th these keep happening. So I have set out to try and gain some leads to try and exact some form of justice against them. Okay. Going to get some some kind of revenge going on. Stop stop the stop the raider attacks. Okay. And how close to Harbourcourt is your village? Uh you say the world's kind of an archipelago, right? It's well, yeah, it's a series of archipelagos. So that, there are large expanses of ocean. It's not just constantly like there are parts in the world where you could be in the ocean and not see land. So it's a series of archipelagos rather than one giant archipelago. Uh, right, see, so yeah, I'd, I'd sort of envisioned the village being just like a small port, a little fishing village port town on a small island somewhere, so let's say a neighbouring island nearby. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It just obviously dictates how much information people are going to know, uh, depending yes. on where okay. they're from. Okay. Uh, I, I figured, figured I the big swear town... to God, whoever's spawning fucking tokens... <laughs> Yeah, I think a big town would be a good place to find information as a starting point. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, apparently the word has gotten out that that particular village does have uh, special or at least rare artifacts, because obviously merfolk are somewhat enigmatic. They don't tend to interact with wider civilization that often. So you're not quite sure who's been spreading the word, but there is rumour of uh, a certain pirate crew that has been going around um, making these kind of bold claims about some of the, the rarer races, such as Murlocs and Naga. Uh, so uh, the last place you heard them making birth or making port is an island called Nilin, N-Y-L, Y N, uh, that is sort of a fair distance to the south. It is somewhere you've heard of in the past. And who is okay. it as well, by the way, that you're asking? Like, are you asking anyone that will listen, or is there particular types of people you're asking these questions to? Um... Probably anyone who could listen. Uh, again, sort of, we're sort of a fairly insular community, so not really entirely sure sort of what kind of people to look for, who to be looking for. It's all a little bit new to my character. Yeah, that's fine. That's N not not used to the big cities and the other races a great deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, most people are strangely polite about it all. You'd think at a a port side tavern in one of the larger islands that people would be kind of aggressive to someone who does look uh, pretty different you know, being a naga and stuff but yeah most people are weirdly quite happy to just give you the information either because you're just so damn persuasive or people <laughs> on Harbacul are just so nice it's hard to tell but yeah you gather you gather your information um, without any that was weird whoever that was um, that was the background, sorry. Uh, no worries, that's fine. Uh, yeah, you get your information, and what? so once you've asked a lot of people all of these questions, what do you do after that? Um... don't know <laughs> no, no that's sorry fine. um so do you just go sit down at a table and uh, get a drink or yeah probably i mean what's what sort of time of day are we talking this is is this it's evening midday. time it's midday. midday okay all right so there's plenty of time in the day so like probably once i've got some leads um i probably want to start looking to make plans 
Um, potentially find a vessel heading towards, I don't know, Nilin would be a good starting point. Probably. Okay, that's I mean, fine. I know I can swim and swim pretty fast, but a boat's probably still faster. Yes, swimming, you know, a couple dozen nautical miles, even for a Naga is going to, a, a Merfolk, sorry, is going to take a bit of doing rather than just getting a vessel. Even, even Merfolks do have uh, sea vessels, even though they spend a majority of their time underwater. Uh, yeah, I sort of, I sort of envision them being a fairly <laughs> nautically adept race. Yep. Let's say, yeah, sort of coastal underwater, but sort of because of that, they've got that affinity, they've got that connection. They're very sort of ocean-going race, so quite, quite adept with watercraft, I suppose. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, before I move on, does anyone else uh, have any like minor objectives they want to do while they're in the tavern, or? Just anything specific, any roles or any questions they'd like to ask either the bartender or the folk at the bar. Uh, could I ask the bartender to put my drink on the floor? <laughs> he, looks, <laughs> he looks at you very, very like strangely as if that's not only is that the, one of the weirdest requests he's ever gotten, he's also gotten it from one of the weirdest looking patrons he's ever received. Uh, but then obviously he can't lean quite over the bar to put it on the floor so he just picks it up and kind of hands it to you all right i'm down with that yeah i've got i've got the booze with your little grabby hands <laughs> okay that's absolutely fine so uh not uh, sorry just real quick again before i anyone else before i move on i would have just been looking for work so okay so you're just asking just around, yeah for yeah for anything in particular uh, apparently yeah there's a couple people uh, looking for more crew on ships. There's obviously always work to be done at the docks. Um, and obviously, if you're that inclined and that persuasive, you could probably get a a job as like a bodyguard or that kind of stuff up in the uh, more prodigious, more prosperous areas of the city, the higher tiers, as it were. There's There's pretty much work going around all the time. It's more about who you talk to, who you know, in order to get specific jobs. It's the information. I, I don't quite have the, I don't have the bodyguard look. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's the information you get from the the barkeep. Okay. Okay. And uh, fancy foot, you said you're with a crew, yeah. Yeah. And um... everyone's being particularly rowdy. Is there anything that the crew is celebrating or? Um. This is this island is kind of like our home base. We haven't been back in a while. It's it's mostly just kind of like a homecoming celebration. Maybe it's somebody's birthday. Um, it's always someone's though, birthday. Even though we, even though it's midday, there's a lot of drinks going out. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably some dice games being played, cards, stuff like that. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Just give me a sec to update some notes here. And what's the name of the crew? Oh, fuck. I didn't... If, if you don't have one off the top of your head, that's absolutely fine. You can just message me it later. I just wanted to check if you already had something decided. I don't. That's fine. Um, and from everyone's interaction, is there any clear indicator of where Fancy Foot is in the crew, like the hierarchy, or is it just everyone's drinking, everyone's having a good time? It's it's not clear if the captain is present or not. I think it's clear she's not the captain. Right. Um, <laughs> but other but other than that, she's just crew of really. of crew. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay, and. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So you guys kind of all go about your business separately, obviously. Um, Giblig, you're halfway through your drink that is about the size of you, or maybe, a, you know, maybe about half, it, it, it's a pint. So it's probably at like half as tall as you to some degree. Um, while you're supping your drink, you suddenly notice that you've been lifted up into the air by a large gray very muscled being who just kind of turns you to look at him and just very abruptly says what are you i'm giblig <laughs> what's a giblig <laughs> i'm a giblig 
You've got to be the weirdest looking fish person I've ever seen. What are you so doing in our tavern? So you said other fish people. This guy is very confused by your um <laughs> your demeanor. We don't like creatures having drinks at the bar, does me and my crew. Uh well, I mean, I, I uh, sorry, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I can drink at a table if you want, if that's the issue. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the issue is. Is 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 it the drinking at the bar, or is it the fish thing? Uh, a sh uh, a shot, even for a goblin, goblin appears like behind his legs and says maybe we should sell it but it finds a fancy price for that armor and i'll bet people eat them like frog's legs i don't taste very nice i have actually eaten goblin though and it tastes very nice the oh, bad thing to say <laughs> wrong thing to say <laughs> the goblin are these guys hmm? these guys aren't from my crew right these are no these uh okay get hold on give me a do, 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 do. Give me a perception check, uh, fancy foot. Okay. Mm, the button needs to load. And obviously with the disturbance, since I'm at the bar too, I'd totally be watching this. Oh, That's I'm that. too drunk to know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so looking at them, you've heard that there is a Goliath, um, what's that? Uh, first mate on a crew called the Black Skulls. But that, yeah, that's that's less about your perception and more your drunken memory and one of your crewmates also going, I've heard this, you know what I mean? Um, Are they from, do I know if they're from this island? They, they, they have, they do make port here pretty frequently, but it's, it's unlikely that this is, uh, this is where their base is. They're probably just stopping off on a, um, between, you know, raiding runs. Okay, I am gonna stand up then, and I'm gonna go, Hey, who gives you the right to decide what's going on in this bar? <laughs> the, 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 as you have now, uh, I've already spoiled that, uh, the Goliath turns to look at Emlyn. Uh, he doesn't treat Ghibli, um, delicately. So, Ghibli, like, Ghibli kind of flops around in his, in his hand as he turns around and who gives you the right to say otherwise i'd like to pipe up and say i've mm. i've eaten goliath once it wasn't very nice you can't fry them because the bones are too brittle so they tend to snap you've got to boil them they make a weird <laughs> sound uh you... <laughs> the goliath i think is... sorry no go ahead I think I would be like, maybe because we're actually from here. This is our bar. Your crew goes, and that's, about, that's, that's, that's the support you get from your crew. Uh, the Goliath f essentially flips you, Ghibli. So he was holding you by essentially the scruff of your armor. Uh, but that now he's holding you by the feet in a vague attempt to intimidate you. Uh, and brings you real close and just say like, it's very clear from his breath that he is very drunk but he then says who you calling brittle can't think of anything clever to say <laughs> so i'm not gonna say anything clever i'm just going to stab him in the face oh excellent <laughs> bar fight bar fight so uh, let's yeah, just give me an attack roll. Just give me an attack roll. Uh, just a normal one? Uh, it's up to you. It depends on what, what if you want to try and use your weapon or if you're going to bite him or... Yeah, I'll bite him in the face. That's better. <laughs> All right, fantastic. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see if this works. Yeah. Oh, shit. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> you are mad. <laughs> so... Question, question for Ghibli, Ghibli, I suppose, as this uh, fight begins. Are you, tr like, when you're biting him, are you trying to hurt him or kill him? Uh, 
I don't think I've thought that far ahead, but I am <laughs> going to try and bite his nose off. <laughs> okay. Uh, so with a 23 to hit, you definitely bite this guy. Give me the damage roll. Uh, um... Um, I don't think... Nope, that's the wrong one. I cannot roll an 18 on a 1d6. Uh, oh, yeah. I just... Hot damn. Uh, yeah, so because this, uh, you've, you take him by surprise, you do actually not completely remove his nose, but it's unlikely that he's going to be keeping his nose anytime soon once <laughs> the fight is over. Uh, he freaks out and, like, you know, lurches back and in the process throws you across the bar uh, and you land quite quite un ungraciously into a shelf of, of several bottles. Um, luckily, they seem to be empty display bottles, not actual stock. But the Does it do the thing where they slide down and it goes bunk, 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 bunk on his head over and over and over again? <laughs> it does now. <laughs> uh, one thing, anyone who's watching Ghibli at this point notices that this creature probably, whatever Ghibli is, he probably doesn't have bones because the bottles just kind of plop, like bounce off his head rather than hit him as if he's got a particularly solid skull. It looks more like bottles hitting a mattress repeatedly. <laughs> uh, at which point the bartender does pull out um, a crossbow from underneath the bar and points it at the Goliath. There is an awkward tension in the air as the Goliath desperately tries to essentially reattach his nose. Uh, the goblin has disappeared. He is <laughs> he is yeeted himself from wherever he was. Uh, but you can start to notice that um, uh, Fancy Foot's crew has all drawn their blades. Whoever was with the Goliath has drawn their blades or whatever weapon they may choose to use. And some people who are just in the bar and bored have also drawn their blades. <laughs> Pirate fight! Pirate, Pirate fight! <laughs> so, uh, Fancy Foot, let's get your reaction first. Um, I think when... Giblig bites the guy's nose off. She's just gonna be like, yeah, huh. <laughs> cheering. Um, <laughs> and um, I think at this point, I'm just standing ready to see like what's gonna happen because if they leave, she won't fight them. But she's not gonna instigate, basically. Yeah. Does she draw her weapons? Yes. Right. Okay. Fantastic. So do you want me to roll an initiative? No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And okay. uh, Otan. Oh, I'd just be laughing at this. Fantastic. <laughs> and Emlyn. A little bit horrified. Tavern where I'm from is normally a lot more civilized than this, gotta be honest. Um, delighted to see a bully get what's coming to him. Definitely rooting for those, the, the little guy being picked on. Um, but also, like, Unsure where this is going and clutching my staff cautiously in case things go down. No problem. Just for reference as well, Emlyn, you do kind of recognize what creature Ghibli is, but Murlocs tend to look way different from where you come from. Okay. They tend to have a shiny light bulb on their head, essentially, and be a little fatter, like rounder, rather oh, than... Oh, angler Ghibli. Murlocs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they tend to look more like, like walking angler fish, whereas yeah. uh, Ghibli just looks right now like a very bloodied and uh toothed frog okay <laughs> no just 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 as reference so there's a, a yeah like i said a tension growing in the bar uh as the goliath essentially calms down about his slightly falling off nose and draws what seems to be just a massive war hammer you hear this kind of whistling noise from outside the the tavern at which point the goliath is obliterated by a cannonball <laughs> the roof cave, oh. the, the part of the roof caves in uh the cannonball sails through the bar luckily 
at least for everyone but the Goliath, makes impact with roughly the base of his neck and removes everything from above his neck. And yeah, the corpse collapses to the ground. There is an awkward silence once again before everyone cheers. I would cheers. say that's one way to get ahead in life. <gasps> <Boom>. <laughs> People clap. Well, well, that was unexpected. What the <laughs> fuck is going on here? As the 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 din of the tavern has uh, completely quieted, you can now hear what some of you would be aware of are the town's alarm bells, which would oh. indicate that the 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 city or island of Harbacore is under attack. I would totally go outside Shit. and see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, same. I think that's a natural reaction. Okay, and Ghibli, do you join them outside as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I have to pick myself out of the little hovel that I've got in, and <laughs> my legs are a lot shorter than everyone else's, so I've got to sort of full-on sprint to catch up with everyone. Excellent. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, a lot a lot of people seem very nonplussed by this whole situation, but yeah, for the most part, people go outside or look out of windows to see what is going on. Since this tavern is pretty much right next to the port, you can already see a huge crowd of people trying to egg, like vacate the port as quickly as possible. Uh, because in the distance, you can see fighting going on that is either by ships or by warehouses. Anywhere that there could be a fight, there is a fight. It is unclear from this distance uh, what the uh, what people of Horbacle are fighting, but if any of you do look out to the ocean, you can see a quite a large ship. Uh, this would probably be like a frigate of some kind, uh, with tattered sails, all the classics, and yeah, it is just mortaring the town uh, from quite a distances away. And you can see the, the, the town guards, essentially, yelling at anyone who can hold a blade or, you know, stand up in a fight to join in protecting the town. Uh, I'll run over to the guards. Well, waddle over to the guards with that <laughs> speed. Uh, you get to a guard who is, yeah, um, essentially just, like, preparing. He turns to look at you and just goes, Ah, fuck! <laughs> uh, Natural reaction. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, ow, but I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> what are you? Uh, I had someone with a axe thing. Uh, great. Head to the main dock. I don't know where that is. He points. Join the fight. Okay. I again waddle off with my axe thing. Okay, and what do the remaining three of you do? I'm yeah, game. I'm, I'll I'm walk that way. Fight. I'm going <laughs> to fight. Okay, and uh, Emlyn? Yeah, I'll get involved. Fantastic. Yep, yeah. yeah, so you're all going to be joining. The, if there's fight. a chance that these guys are the same people that attack my village, I need to go see if see if they are, Get some. see if I can get any hints of where they came from, mm -hmm. yeah, exact some point. justice. Exact some justice. So and I'm well aware they look like just an average civilian walking with no weapons but like pocket knife <laughs> yep so if you could all roll an initiative for me hold on i can i can i can make that in the thing can't i i can make turn orders Ooh. so da, 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 da. Yep, descending. yeah so if you all just want to roll uh, an initiative of some kind i will move everyone into position and set up our field of combat Yay. How do I do um, this? If you click, click on, on your token, if you click on your token before you roll initiative, it'll go into the turn order. Oh, okay. I'll re-roll mine then. I Bonk. rolled bad. I'm drunk. How do I roll? What, what do I click on to roll initiative um, in this? On your character sheet, it should have a little square that says initiative. Just click on. Oh, okay. It actually has the word, and it'll just oh. auto roll it. Generally, if it's on your sheet, you can just click it, and it'll do it. Aha. Uh -huh. Seems to be successful. There it is. Wow, 
Why do these not look alive? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Okay, so if for the let's say the bottom half of the of the the battle arena, which is outlined with the square, uh, if you just want to pick a place to start your your combat from. I think despite being a rogue and I should be, you know, going in and out, I'm angry um, and drunk. So I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. Fuck Come up. at me. What are the blue things? Mm -hmm. uh, that's water. I'm just okay. filling Oh, you're it. sort of making a dock, are you? Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, I'm clever and stuff. Although I've realized now that these things should probably all be moved, so I'm having to move my squiggles, mm. which just looks really strange. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so these creatures, which are, as you can tell, clearly not alive, uh, are emerging from the water. They're not, they don't look like generic people. They look like zombies in pirate gear. Um, or tra I guess you'd say traditional pirate gear. So, you know, a lot of them have uh, tricons and tattered old uniforms and that kind of thing. Uh, right, let me roll initiative for them. My character who's up to one is just like, I probably already killed you once, you old bastard. Excellent. <laughs> Fucking love it. Uh, how many got? One, two, three, four. Six. Oh. Do any of them look familiar to me? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. She it just was something funny to say. <laughs> uh, I don't think these things have an initiative score. Uh, I've forgotten where to look for it. I mean, we all rolled pretty low, so... <laughs> they actually have a negative initiative, so... Um... Oh yeah, that's not how that works. Oh well. Uh, no, 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 no. Add a turn. You can be 13. Oh, I have to, I forgot I have to press enter. I'm really good at this, guys. Did you know? I DM'd you the, the ship name and the crew name that I thought of. Okay, cool. I'll add that to my to my notes. I don't know why my old Oten Kin keeps showing up whenever I switch pages on my character sheet. <laughs> um, it's because they're both like linked um, to the to the token, so that'll be oh. why. Um, okay. It's not intentional. Yeah, I'll try and fix it for next time. Okay. One of them has an initiative of one. <laughs> uh, wow, I rolled, I rolled three fifteens out of six d twenty. That's that's very unlikely. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> wild. Okay, and descending. Okay. Let me just add the health. You guys shouldn't be able to see this, but if you can, it's not like the biggest issue. It's mostly just for me. For tracking purposes. Yeah, spot on. Wow, you guys did roll bad, I just noticed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure did. Uh, Al, do you have an initiative bonus? One. One. Okay, yeah. So you guys, you, so it's not as bad. Al gets to go second, <laughs> and Ghibli gets to go ahead of that uh, one particular zombie. Okay, that's all good. Don't know why I said it like that. But yeah, just for, for reference as well, you can picture this kind of happening all over. It's not just these six undead creatures. There's quite a few all over the docks. You're just fighting your, like, you know, little section of them, as it were. 
So we've got no the first one here. What's their movement? Um, oh wow, for zombies they move quick. One, two, three, four. Okay, and this one. There it is. So this thing just shambles over to you, Giblig. And it doesn't really even try and swipe at you. It more like kind of uses its own movement and body weight to fall on you aggressively because you're so small. Okay. Um. Okay. Um, so it rolled a 21 though. So what's your AC? 18. 18. I was going to say, I'd be very surprised if it was over 20. Because I don't think that's possible. Okay, so Ghibli take uh, take five damage. Oof. So remember to do that. You just click on your character, click on the green square, and then type minus five. Okay, and that's that thing's turn done. Otan. It is your turn. Seeing they're shambling towards us, I would move a little bit this way, just kind of get near the middle of our group of people. <laughs> An Eldritch Blast! <laughs> um, I will shoot the okay. one that just smacked him. Okay, no problem. Yeah, roll it. Okay, so five damage. Which is sad, because I get a plus three to it, so I must have rolled a two. <laughs> if you hover over the number, it tells you. Yeah, you rolled a two. <laughs> okay. And we've got El Zombo Doggo. One, two, three. Grr. That's gonna... Grr. <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna kind of run up and try and bite you. So that is a plus. That is a 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just one damage. Yeah. <laughs> Gave you a paper cut. Yeah, it just snaps at you wildly kind of thing. One, two, three. Got another one attacking our Ghibli friend. Seventeen. That is a miss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up is okay fancy foot just appeared <laughs> that was very strange i appeared yeah i want the extra token oh so i don't know how to fix that it's fine i just keep deleting them i'll fix it for next session okay this one l turns to look at fancy foot and just walks off the dock and uh yeah it's currently submerged it's with you'll find out <laughs> Gibblig, you're up. Yeah, I'm... How far can I move and still fight? Uh, if you move, you will take an opportunity attack from two zombies. Oh, oh right, sure. Um... I'm... Gonna stab the one to my top left. Okay, roll it. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, almost. But no, that was not a hit. Uh. <laughs> okay, anything else? Mm, no, no, no. Okay, dokie. I just wanted to check something on the Murloc race thing. Yep. Okay. Next one is El Crawly Reno. They crawl up to... Fancy foot. 
Uh, and that is a miss again with a five. Ah, Emlyn, you're up. Uh, right. Not sure. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so you'll have uh, an attack action, a move action, and mm -hmm. then you can do any minor actions that your character sheet might have. So you have plenty of movement. I think you can move like what thirty feet. Something like that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, how far does that translate to on this board? Uh, so every square, square is five feet. Okay, so I can move six squares. Mm -hmm. All right. Noted. And then obviously, um, if you want to use a spell to attack with, that's how you, you, you just. Yeah, I haven't got much really offensive. They're all just sort of. Yeah. Well, remember you can heal. <laughs> They're Ghibli useful, as well. but not like. Sorry. You can heal Ghiblig as well if you want to. Yeah, um... Or just smack a zombie also... with a quarter staff. I don't yeah. think I can get to give like this turn. Um, if it, if I, can you move, is moving diagonally one yep. space, does that count? So one, two... Oh, I could get to give like... So you probably have range healing spells. Yeah. Uh, I do not. It's, it's contact healing. It's oh. healing touch that I have. In retrospect, I probably could have taken a more of a ranged heal, but oh well. <laughs> uh, so what, do I just drag my character token where I want to be? Yep. Uh, fine, then. I'll go help Gibbling out. And... How, how do spells work? Is there, like, a limited amount I can cast? Like, how, how does that... So, on your character sheet, you should have... Um... It will tell you how many of each, like, so slots, you know, like level one mm -hmm. spell slots. That's how many spells of that level you can cast per per long rest or per short okay. rest. Okay. Sorry. Um, no, it's long um, rest for everyone but a warlock. All right. Okay. okay so until we like, I, I take it long rest is basically like sleep at the end of the day. Yeah, nap time. Uh, right. So I've got four spells. Cool. Um, I will use cure wounds. One gib leg. Okay. I'll reach Slap out and touch his slimy body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how much healing does it say that is? That is... Oh, Lord. Uh, let me... Uh, oop. That's, that's what it is. It is 1d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Okay. If you... It should... If you just click on the actual spell in your spell, you it should to... just roll it too. When you're putting in the spells, you have to make sure you set it up to not just export the spell card. Um, which would take time to edit all the spells, so it would probably be faster just to roll 1d8 plus whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, I went between my pages again to look at something and Fancy Foot's back. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so your spellcasting ability is... Wisdom. So I... So it'd be mm -hmm. 1d8 plus whatever your wisdom modifier is. So that's the big number in the box. Right, okay, yep, I get you. Yep, I see. So. And by big, I don't mean quantity, I mean physical size. It's. <laughs> right. Size matters. Okay, give me like <laughs> eight. Yeah. Just remember, you can't I am heal invincible. Your, you can't heal above your max. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And how many moves did you use? Five squares to move, Emlyn? Uh, oh, um, yes, I think it was five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cure wounds is... Oh, it's a one action. Yeah, so that's, that's your full turn. Unless you want to move that extra... Oh, I can move as well after that. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you didn't use um, all of it. All right. Boop. I'll and I get a bit of distance from the zombies. Are, but, say, I don't know what class you are, but you might have some bonus actions, but I doubt it. Uh, it's are we sharing that information yet, or do we keeping? Do your, we cla not... your class is is just. It's easier if everyone knows what your class is. So you're a druid. I'm a druid. Yes. 
Okay. That's what I mean. I'm like, can we like infer this information? Are, are druids commonplace enough that people are like, oh, that's a druid. I know what a druid is. I, I've seen one of those people before. And they'll just like instantly be like, yeah, okay, I get it. Your, char your characters wouldn't necessarily know what each other's classes are because classes don't necessarily exist. But it's also okay. not so important that characters need to know it. It's more that players need to know what class you are for mm, okay. various reasons. Okay. Fancy folk, what is everybody up. else then at this point? Because I'm not actually familiar with exactly what everyone is at this point, at this stage. Yeah, if you guys want to mention. As class. far as anything goes, I'm just a caster. I'm a weird caster. <laughs> okay. I'm a rogue. Uh, I look like I got, a I got a rogue vibe. Yeah. Okay. I'm a I'm warlock a, wizard. <laughs> I'm a Sorry? tank of just a fighter tank. with okay. massive armor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fancy folk. I'm a. Yeah, I'm a rogue, but in in game you might just look at me and be like, "That's a pirate." Uh, I was um, more saying it's your turn. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, no problem. I am. I'm gonna attack the dog first because he bit me. The dog. Um. And then I want to use. I can't use my sneak attack because this guy's here. Mm -hmm. But. I can, no, wait, I can't, sorry. I had to think. Um, I want to use my bonus action to disengage and move over here. And now there is nothing else within five feet of me so I can do my sneak attack damage, which is not a bonus action. It is just damage. Okay. Um, so it takes the six damage and then takes the- Another six damage. Another six damage, okay. Okay, this uh, zombie dog looks effed up, but it's still standing. Anything else? Nope, that's all my actions. Okay. Blech, 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 blech. Okay, this Zambambo is gonna attack Emlyn. Okay, it crits. Ooh, what a uh, welcome oof. to D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Pain Town. So that's seven damage. Uh Okay. So if you click... Did you roll the damage die twice? Oh, I just do the I just do the max damage thing cuz oh, okay. I am raised on 4th edition. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah, that's that thing's turn. And now we've got the one that first attacked. We're back to the top of the round. I'm going to drag my dead token off to the side. and just. Do you want us to it. take max damage for crits? Or do you want it to... Because roll 20 is automatically going to do it with the roll 2 damage die thing. Uh, for players, just do the roll 2 thing. Uh, for okay. monsters, it'll just be max. Just because, like I said, it's just easier. Uh, it is easier. Okay, well, Okay, this one swipes at Giblig, and once again, whiff. Whiff. Yeah. Otan, you're up. Okay. Oh, ten. I can obviously see we're starting to see a lot of numbers here, so I'm gonna walk my happy butt up about here, mm -hmm. and I've got a 15 foot cubed thunder wave hitting that guy, hitting the three zombies to the north of me. Yep, that's fine. X. And they have to roll a DC 13. Let me see which actual stat they have to roll. I'll just click it. Does it t tell me? Uh, it should be your spell save on your character sheet, I think. So if you look at the character sheet and then go to the spell. It's a DC 13, but I'm looking at what they need to, what stat they need to save. Oh, for. right. Okay. I get you. Constitution. Constitution. Cool. Just give me a sec. I'm just. Why won't it let me? Um, is that spell not centered around yourself? Because I have that one as well. No, it's you. You yeah. can cast it. Um, oh, it's you, asking me what level. There we go. You cast it at the edge. Yeah, the cube originates from you, not centers on you. Yeah, it's hitting the three by three square 
just right above me. So it's not hitting either of you. Okay. It's hitting Zombles. See, the way I read it, yeah, my, my, I guess I just misinterpreted the text, I guess. I saw, I read it as sort of like a point blank AOE kind of effect. I think one of the corners has to be like touching you, but it's like you look in a location and you're like, push. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a shotgun. Okay. Oh, that, 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 imp that improves things. <laughs> Maybe I do have some <laughs> offensive capabilities. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so all of them, except let's say the dog, um, succeed. Uh, it's nine damage. Boop. Okay. Anything else? If they succeed, they only take half damage. Ah, right. So. Okay, so they still take damage. That's fine. And we round it down, so minus four. And any failures get shoved. How far? Ten feet. Can I take an opportunity attack on the dog? I think it shoved away. I don't think shove counts, but that okay, might that might be a change in five e. So let me just check five e. I oh. I don't actually know. Yeah, that's why I'm googling. You can make an opportunity attack when a hostile creature that you can see moves out of your reach to make the opportunity. You can use your. Um. I don't think shoving counts because yeah, it's kind of like a instantaneous kind of thing. And I still have some movement, so I would definitely move back after that. So that was 10 feet. I'll move 10 more feet back. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see moves and uh, to make the, the, the attack. Okay, so you don't provoke an opportunity attack yeah. when someone or something moves you. Yeah. Um, so that probably applies the other way as well. Yep. Okay, worth a try. Yeah, no, I get it. Sorry, I'm just trying yeah, to... Yeah, you guys might want to get your hearing checked after I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Considering it emits a thunderous boom for 300 feet. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the zombies often, or the fights, temporarily go, Bleh, and look over. <laughs> Everybody else just has tinnitus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out who, who shot a cannonball in the tavern. That, <laughs> that ship way off in the distance. That was described earlier. She's mad about it. She's mad she about liked that, she, she liked that place. I like that tavern. Yeah, that's fair. I get that. Okay. Anything the else best in Best ships in town. Anything else, Otan? Nope. Nope. Okay. Sorry, I was taking a drink. That's fine. Zambambo Doggo crawls, although is barely held in, holding together, crawls over to uh, Fancy Foot. And rolls an 18 to attack. Yep, that hits. Okay. God, my job is so hard. Uh, roll. All I did was adjust my hit points on my character sheet and Fancy Foot appeared again. Yeah, I, I don't know. It keeps moving them back to the center as well, no matter how, how much I unlink the character token, but I'll fix it for the next session. Um, so take two damage. Yep. Yep, cool. And then we've got this guy. That bite kind of hurt. Yeah. Okay, this zombie's going to attack Ghibli as well. Uh, and that is a 21. Meow. Yeah. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that will be six. Five damage. Oof. Good thing you're the tank, eh? I guess, yeah. Okay, and that's that for that one's turn. Blurb. Okay. Ghibli, you're up. Yeah. I'm going to try and swipe the zombie to my top left. I'm going to try and swipe his legs out. Okay. So I think that'll be my halberd again. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. fuck. <laughs> Not your day. Are you, hold on, no. are you rolling? Yeah, you are rolling the attack. Okay, anything else? No, no. I'll just, I'll just take it. OK, 
here, and we've got Crawly Boy, who is one, two, three, four. I'm gonna swipe at um, <laughs> Otan. And that's a oh yeah, crit. That hits. <laughs> that's a crit, so take seven damage. Uh, wrong square. Oh. Yeah. All right, and Emlyn. Um, if I move away from the square, that zombie attacks me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you gotta smack it. I could also thunder wave it. You could thunder wave it. Uh, yeah. Let's do. A th let's go. With, let's go with the thunder wave. Let's just like everyone's just getting their hearing back. Let's ruin it again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's three by three square directly above my character token, I suppose. Um, push them back towards the water. Uh, how do I make that happen? Uh, I'll move them. Is it? Uh, uh what is the? DC they have to because it won't just hit them they'll have to roll something mm. uh, yeah I don't thunder wave casting time one action range blah 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 um, for you it's your a wave of thunderous stuff. force sweeps out from you each creature in a 15 foot cube originating from you must make a constitution saving throw on a failed save a creature takes 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet okay so they need to roll a constitution save. Um, and what's the number they have to reach? Because they should be on your character sheet. Uh, oh, so what, 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 would, what would I be looking for on there? It should say, under your attacks and spell casting on your main page, it should say Thunder Wave and then have DC next to it with a number. Uh, spell save um, DC should just be above your spells as well. It's 13. Okay, yes, 13, yeah. Okay, so those two need to roll. Uh, yep, they both make it. So they take half damage, is it? No, no, no. Yeah, it's 1d8 if they resist, yeah. Unsuccessful, the creep, yeah, it takes half damage. Okay. So if you want to roll those 1d8s. I'll just roll A1D8 and I'll apply that to all of them because it's quicker. <laughs> um, okay, fine. Five, so they each take five damage. I love how quick and responsive roll 20 is. It's so great. <laughs> okay, and you said 10 feet, yeah? Do they get pushed back if they resisted it, or is it just the damage? Uh, um, they only get pushed back if they fail to resist it, but oh. they take half damage yeah. if they... Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, and it's 2d8, not just 1d8. Yeah, but they take... any Any unsecured objects get pushed back as well. I don't know if there's anything lying around. Uh, yeah, I'll just... Uh, they'll just take 10 damage instead, instead of making them roll again. Because that's way quicker. Okay, fancy foot, you're up. Unless All right, Emlyn, we're gonna hit this. Emlyn, unless oh, you've sorry. got anything else you want to declare. Um, no. No, nope. I'm good. Yeah, fancy foot, you're up. I'm gonna try to kill a zombie dog. Yay! Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yep, that definitely hits. Uh, this thing had. Uh, I mean, it's a zombie, so there is no lethal or non-lethal. So. Uh, how do you how do you dispatch Zombo Dago? Um, I slit its throat. Oh damn! I'll I'm a pirate. Yeah, I didn't say anything. It's fine. I'm doing well. Okay, that zombie is dead. Anything else? Um, how do offhand attacks work? Can I take it on a different creature? Or does it have to be the same one? I think it has to be in conjunction with the first attack. So, okay. When you then roll, it's not really roll both attacks, basically, as far as I'm aware. 
There's not really. Well, because it's a bonus action to do an offhand attack. Let me check. The only thing I know for sure is that you don't add your damage modifier to the offhand attack. Uh, Doesn't include your weapon. Right, so yeah, you have to use it after the first attack, but there's nothing that specifies that you can't use it on a different creature. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to use it on a different creature. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna use if you my move one, if attack. you move one square up, you'll get flank. So that's advantage. Oh, we play with flanking. Yeah, okay. flanking's fun. I just forget. Most campaigns I'm in don't do it. Well, that's okay. stupid. <laughs> I'm in here. I'm just going to roll this again, and whichever one's higher will count for advantage. Yep. Okay. So the 22 is higher, so that's the one you take. So it takes two damage. And because I hit it, and there's an ally in five feet of it, I get to use my sneak attack. Damn. Okay. So the freaking winner so far for most enemies killed goes to, goes to Fancy Foot. Um, yeah. How, how do you dispatch this Zamba? I think I just stab it in the chest. If that works on zombies. Yep. Uh, Evelyn, you are covered in disgusting viscera. Sorry. Charming. Okay. Anything else fancy? Nope. That's everything. Fabulous. Oh, I need to remove their turns. Oh, you... Can't... Wait. What? Why can't I just remove the... Oh, I have to click on the icon. That's really weird. Okay. <laughs> and then this one attacks Ghibli. 19 plus 3, 22. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> they angry. They angry. Three damage. That's not that bad. You're still above half health, so... It's all gooch. I'm above half health. By one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you squishy. Yes, I very squishy. Otan, you're up. Well, obviously a bit disheveled from just getting walloped by a uh, zombie. I'm going to go ahead and cast magic missile at the one that's right in my face. Uh, that's going to... Oh, no, a magic missile doesn't cause opportunity attack, does it? Nope. Uh, and that's... I actually get to cast three of them. So. What were you saying, Caitlin? Even though it's a ranged spell? I don't. It's an auto hit. Yeah, spell. I think it's still. I th no, yeah, it'll still cause an opportunity attack, but I'll only do the opportunity attack for the one rather than three. So. Uh, they get an opportunity attack for me. Cause you if you use a range thing in melee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, 13. That still hits. Uh, what's your armor class? 11. 11, yeah. <laughs> oh, squishy. Yeah, I'm squishy. Well, but I'm casting yeah, they can't kill you. all three of them on it. So, yeah, you take one damage and in the process deal 10 damage. So I think that's a worthy yep. trade. Yeah. I'm squished. Squished. Anything else? I'm at half-life now. Nope. Well, actually, he took opportunity attack. I can run. <laughs> yeah. Because they can only do one opportunity attack per turn. So, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Sploosh. So you're, are you uh, jumping into the water? Oh, yeah. I swim at 40 feet. <laughs> um, so how, how, faster than one. How many That's, squares uh, did you move to get to the water? 5, 10, 15, 20 to get to the edge of the water. Okay, so then you'd be down by... What's your swim speed? Uh, 40. How is your swim speed 40? You're faster than me and I'm literally a fish. He's also literally a fish. <laughs> are you? No. No. Oh. I, I have friends who are fish. Some of my best <laughs> friends are fish. Uh, yeah, so you, yeah, you'd have uh, 20 feet of movement. Okay. So I'd go there. Uh, it's going to take two... You can drop down for free, but obviously uh, mm -hmm. it's going to take double movement to get back onto the dock. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted a way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? Nope. <laughs> All right. And then this one's going to attack Ghibli. Doing a great job tanking so far. It's 14. So that's yeah, nice. yeah, fucked. Yeah. <laughs> This thing lightly slaps your armor. It's just bleh. All right. I am mightily offended. Okay, and this one is going to try and crawl out of Zivata. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have them roll a save first. Okay, yeah, he's fine. You can hear as he like essentially grabs hold of the dock, his sinews and bones creaking and cracking so you can kind of guess what would have happened if he'd failed the save but he gets there and he's gonna roll an attack fancy foot and that is a fucking freaking out i've rolled three crits get me take, take, <laughs> take seven damage dm Nicole cheating hurts. dm cheating dm clearly cheating take seven damage he violently smacks you with a club all right. That hurt. You did, did. Ghibli, you're up. Sorry. Uh. Can he hit an attack? Fuck the halberd. It's not working. I'm going to literally bite this thing in the kneecaps because that's the quote of the closest thing yeah. don't, to me. Don't you get... What um archetype have you picked as a fighter at level three? Uh. Oh, Fighters get them at five. All oh, right. Okay. So yeah, you, I, I didn't know because some art of arc, arc types get like multiple attacks and stuff. So okay, never mind. Yeah, roll your attack. You, you bite him. Uh... Wait, no, they do get an archetype at three. They get. I was wrong. I thought they Sorry. got action surge as well. Okay, but... let, let's just Google this instead of all okay. saying I wonder. Dean, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm looking at it. I it do. doesn't have a subclass on my character sheet. Uh, but I think it should. Yeah, martial archetype level three, and you get action surge, which is um, starting at second level. You can push yourself beyond your normal limits for a moment. One on on your turn, you can take one additional action. You can use this once per short rest. So you can take two attacks per short on, rest. on one turn. Yeah, uh, and okay. mar martial archetype. Uh, you choose an archetype that you strive to illuminate. Choose champion, battlemaster, or eldritch knight. Um, so we need to find the. Or more. Yeah, th there's, there's more in different be. books. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to do that between between sessions because it's a lot yeah, of like fine. little things. But yeah, you can. But you can take your action surge as well if you want to to do an extra attack. Uh. Yeah, once I've bitten him in the kneecaps, yeah, so, I will... Well, before you do that, roll the d6 uh, plus your proficiency modifier. Oh, yeah, i got to bring it up because I've got like a, a several different tabs open so I can get all the info. Should be 1d6 plus 2. Yeah. Nice! Yeah! Easy uh, damage. Then I'm gonna try and cut its leg off with the halberd. All right, go for it. <laughs> God damn, man, you're cursed. Um, I think it's just the halberd. It's the halberd. Why does his oh never nose mind look like um, that? Oh, it's a seven. Uh, I don't know. That's just how they look. Okay. He just been getting three. He was so close to, to hitting them again, but not quite. <laughs> All right, Crawly Boy. Blech. Blech. He's gonna attack Emlyn. Boo. One d twenty. <laughs> Boo! How dare you? Because his previous target just went whoop. So that ran away. <laughs> Twelve against your AC, which I think is a miss. But I'm not sure. What's your AC? Uh, my AC is 14. 14, yep, so that misses. Every, all the zombies except the ones that are attacking Giblig are, like, incompetent. But the ones attacking Giblig seem to be very very well trained. Uh, okay, Emlyn, you're up. Alright, the zombies uh, turn its attention to me, so uh, I should probably fight back. 
Um, what are people clicking to just do like the quick attack things? If you click the attack on the like list of attacks and spellcasting, does it just like if do you, one for you? If you've set yeah. up the attack for your quarter staff, yeah. Yes. Yeah, then you should just. So if I it. just wind up for a two hander with the quarter staff and try and put mm -hmm. a dent in a zombie. The <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Just, yeah, baseball bat style. <laughs> I think you still have advantage Yeah, you on. need to turn advantage off. Oh, and, where's, and the, where's you that? you need to turn okay. damage on. Uh, it says core bio right. spells, then you have the cog up there. Click the cog. Okay. And in the top right, you'll have a thing that says always roll advantage. I switch. don't see that. Oh, so, always right. Oh, yeah, no, I see it. Yeah. And you want to switch it to advantage toggle. And then below and then, that, yeah. where it says auto damage roll, you want to switch it to auto roll damage and crit. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. So for now, I'll just take the 17 so you don't have to roll again. So if you just want to roll okay. your damage number as you normally would, so whatever. I think for um, four staffs, it's a D6, isn't it? Uh, with a two-hander, it's 1d8. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 because it's versatile. Plus one bludgeoning. Yep, so it'd be 1d8 plus one. So 1d8 plus your strength modifier, which should be one. Right. Three to match. Uh, anything else for this turn? Um... Nope. No. Okay. Fancy foot, you're up. Yeah, let's do some more murder, maybe. Murder, Woo! murder, murder. All right, we're going to hit this guy with a short sword. Oh, damn. Yep, that hits. Okay. Is he still alive? Oh, yeah, he was in the water. Of course he's still alive. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we're going to hit him with this. Oof. Yep. And then we're going to hit him with this. Oh, is this the... Yeah, the sneak attack. All right. Well, Keeping up okay, with your record. There needs, there needs to be no creatures within five feet of me besides him. Does this dead creature count? No, of course not. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So, yeah. So, how do you how do you dispatch your third Zambambo? Uh, after slicing him up, I'm kicking him back in the water. Sploosh. Yeah, that's fine. Splush. He and hits I'm... the water with an a, a horrifying kind of <laughs> sound as he falls I... to pieces. I actually think I am going to move over here so we can do flanking. Yep, that's fine. Because your turn. I don't remember whose token goes to who because I can only see my own name. But Oh, you should be able to see everyone's name. But No, I've only got my own name. Yeah, only. Oh, there we go. You should be able now be able to see Emlyn's. Yes, I see Emlyn. Yeah, okay. Why are these settings not default? This is so stupid. Right, save and Mr. Underwater Boy. <laughs> okay, you should be able to see everyone's names now. Anything else fancy? That's my everything. That's my everything. Uh, okay. And the same same zombies that have just been beating on Ghibli this entire time are going to continue to do so. Uh, but yeah. That's a 13, so that's a whiff. Whiff. Okay. Otan, you're up. Okay, I'm going to crawl out of the water. That's half my movement speed, right? Uh, it's half. It's it's double, so it's not half of it. So it's, it's, so just it's instead 10 of, feet. Yeah. Okay, so it's just 10 feet. Okay. Well, everything's within range of what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot the guy that was nibbling on me earlier with an Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, it misses. Nope. That's bang on. <laughs> oh, nine. Actually, AC. no. Cool. It's they're, it's one higher than their AC. They have eight okay. AC. <laughs> uh, so I just how does this thing explode? Oh, its head just completely erupts into just gore. Emlyn, you're covered in more gore and viscera. <laughs> <laughs> not, like, not fancy foot? Not fancy Don't fine. A... <laughs> Don't nibble on me. Bang. <laughs> All right. It's a purple else? streak and an explosion. Nope. I'm staying there. Okay. Uh, this one is still alive. That one is. I'm just fixing the turn order. 
All right, this one's gonna once again swipe at Giblig, and it misses. Yeah, Giblig is just so small. Because you actually, yeah, you count ass. You're not a medium creature. You're a small creature, so don't attacks take disadvantage. I don't know. I don't know. I'll look that up later. Yeah. Uh, Ghibli, it's your turn. Yeah. I'm going to forget about the halberd and just bite these things. I'm going to bite that one again. Take this, bitch. So you, this is the top yeah. left one again, yeah? Yeah, top left. Uh, yep, that hits if you want to roll your damage. 1d6 plus its strength modifier, sorry, not your um, proficiency. Yeah. Alright. Just just as a, as a side note, these things taste awful. Oh. <laughs> but with each bite, you are ripping a chunk of flesh off them. Nice. But you're also a murloc, so you, you are also a saprophore, so you, it doesn't taste nice, but you can eat it. It won't. Oh, nice. It won't hurt you. What? It, what is that word that you just said? A saprophore means you can eat rotten flesh. Okay. Never heard that word before. I learned it from Cataclysm because I'm a huge ah. freaking nerd and I like <laughs> fancy words. Yeah, saprophore. I just have the mental image of Giblig doing the dog thing where they gets like a food in and just like tossing it a little bit. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Yeah, shakes You guys know they're doing combat shit. I'm just sitting down for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for reference, rats are saprophores. Just fun fact. Um, okay. Anything else, Ghibli? Uh, uh no. No? Nope. Okay. I like, I like the idea that Ghibli keeps, like, looking at his hal halberd being like, maybe this time it'll work. Oh, also, I just want to, I just want to confirm one thing. I won't say, I won't specify, but is the thing with your halberd carrying over to this campaign oh as well? God. It is, it is, yes. Uh, your, your halberd says sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. It is okay, okay halberd. <laughs> I forgot. What's the thing with a halberd for those not initiated? Um, Ghibli My... says his halberd can talk. Yeah. Oh, okay. It can. It might be able to talk, it might not. <laughs> I We never really got far enough. Cause... Also, out of interest, is it a standard size halberd or is it proportional to a murloc? Is it like it's a murloc halberd? Okay. I had, I had a mental image of this creature carrying a sword like three times its or weapon three times its size. I mean, he probably could. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, sorry, I was reading something else. Emmeline, shot in. Alrighty. Um, stick time. Do I get? Was there something about like flanking earlier? If I um beside or behind a zombie? If if you if if there is a straight a line thing? between you and another player and then a monster is intersected by that line, then then it causes flanking. I'll draw like a line example. Okay, I see where it is. So I would have to be like opposite side of it. Yeah, from exactly, Gibbleg. so like there. Right. Yeah, like yeah, that. I get you. Uh, can I? You could move there. Yeah. Yeah, you can move there. I'm, if, I'm, if I'm moving past a zombie, it doesn't like reach out and take a swipe if, at me as I go, you, does it? If you enter and then leave one of its tackle zones or adjacent squares, you will take an opportunity attack. So you would have to go the long way so if you went here oh hold on it's not it's no longer selected freehand eh. you'd have to do th I'd be like th this yeah okay i get you uh which is one oh, that's doable yeah so if you want to do that you can you can do that okay around that okay so if you're just going to roll an attack with your quarter staff that means you roll with advantage, so you roll the attack twice, basically. Or you can <laughs> toggle it. Yeah, yeah, you can toggle the roll with advantage thing on your character sheet. Um, I see. Ah. I think I've done that right. Yep. Was that right? Yeah. Is that an advantaged yep. one? Yep. So either one of those would hit, and you do four blood damage. Um... Okay, so that's the first hit on that thing. Where was I looking? There it is. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to check if these things were weak to bludgeoning damage, but they're not. They don't. They're not actually weak to anything. Um. 
They're just weak. They're just weak. Anything else, Emlyn? Uh, nope, I'm good. Fancy foot, you're up. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm over here now. Hello. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna hit it. Uh, yep, yeah, that's a hit. And then I'm gonna hit it again, maybe? maybe. Oh, yeah. And then, um, because there's allies within five feet of it, I can do this. I have, uh, normally you can only do sneak attack if you have advantage or if there's an ally within five feet, but the reason that I've been doing it with the other thing is because Swashbuckler lets me do it if there's no other creatures within five feet of me also. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so yeah, uh, Emlyn, you smack this thing with your quarter staff and almost instantaneously Fancy Foot appears f a few feet away from you and eviscerates this thing to the point where it is barely holding together. It has lost an arm, one of its legs is all wonky, and it is- Not it's, quite dead yet. Yeah, no, it's not dead, but <laughs> instead of making a consistent bleh kind of noise, this one's kind of going mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's not doing well. Fancy, anything else? That's my turn. All right, Giblig's best friend. Yeah. I'm gonna go use the restroom if I get hit, uh, my AC's 14. All right. Uh, that's an yeah! eight to hit. Giblig, the never hit. Except for those two times. <laughs> Otan, you're up. I like Otan as a name because it's like, oh, tan. <laughs> like every time anyone sees him when he's come back from the beach, they're like, oh, tan. <laughs> More hilarious dad jokes on their way. How tan are you, Otan? Oh, <laughs> he's tan. <laughs> I am very dark gray, so yes, I am tan. <laughs> he's ash. Actually, I'm very dark gray with a very white side, but that's a whole different thing. Um, I will go for... I'm debating how conservative I want to be. I'm just going to Eldritch Blast the one that's in the middle of everybody. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yep, yeah, that's... Okay, how's this thing die? Just holds his hand up like flintlock pistol and does the same thing to, as he did the last one. Exploding Oh, does head. he do it with finger guns? <laughs> yes, he does it entirely with finger guns. Excellent. <laughs> He's going to have bad jokes. I took a specific skill for a reason. <laughs> hey, Emlyn, guess what you've just got covered in? Is it viscera? It's viscera and gore. <laughs> I need a viscera cleanup detail. Yeah. All right, Giblig, you're up. Do yeah. your thing. I'm gonna bite it again because it's the only thing I seem to be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You hit. Don't roll your damage. Oh. Uh. I'm terrible at doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I realized what I was missing on mine. Okay, this thing is just holding together. Giblig has taken several chunks of this thing. And I assume has eaten them all. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna spit him out. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say heal one hit point <laughs> for, for for eating several chunks of the same creature. That's the one that was forgetting. Okay, uh, Emlyn, you're up. I yeah, am. Oh. Um... You smell so bad right now. Yeah. I mean, that's not my pro top concern right now, if I'm honest. There's a finger wiggling <laughs> in your hair. Still alive, um, just kind of like ta ta Taking just a moment to pluck the finger out of my hair and throwing it... The finger is to very Ghibli sad. ...to Ghibli for a snack. <laughs> Ghibli, do you eat the finger that he throws for you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm on that train now. I've I've started eating our enemies. Just, there is no going back. Sort of catching the finger in your mouth and in the air, just throwing it into your mouth. Uh, Ghibli, <laughs> can, popcorn. Ghibli, can you roll me a history check? History. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, you feel a crunch when you bite the finger, and when you uh, inspect it, it's a ring that is worth two gold. Add two gold to your inventory. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> roll with Tasty it. Tasty nugget. That's, that's my ethos with D&D is roll with it. <laughs> Pun intended. All right, Emlyn, what were you doing? Okay. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, round behind the zombie just to smack it in the back of the head again. Yep. So it seems to do a pretty good job before. Uh, so I need to find the button that makes the smack. Smack! Advantage on. Bonk. Bonk. Okay, yep, so the 22 hits. And how does this thing die? Um, head just sails clean from the body, just like properly, like, bam, wind up like a baseball bat, head off, pop. Excellent. Uh, you hit it so hard that Otan has the option to catch it if he wants. <laughs> Actually, no, sure. if you want to catch it, roll a deck saving throw. I will try. <laughs> no guarantees this will end well, but... Yeah! You catch it. <laughs> it is a head. Uh, <laughs> screw it. I've done it once already. Give me a history check. No, give me an investigation check. 11. This thing has a glass eye. It's worth 10 silver. Okay. You I'll, have to take it. get 10 silver. You freaking murder hobos. <laughs> um, yeah, this pretty quickly descended into us playing with a bunch of dead bodies. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> one way to get and it. None of us seem to have a problem with that. So <laughs> I'm I'm back. Welcome back, Emlyn. You see as the head as Otan catches the head. Of, all you see from this distance is he plucks its eye out and puts it in his pocket. And then oh. I chuck the head into the water behind me. Sploosh. <laughs> Just recoil a little bit in horror at what I'm watching because from here it just looks like he just pocketed an eyeball. I mean, if you look five feet from you, there is a very like messy and gore covered. Oh, murloc. yeah, but like <laughs> for somebody to literally down. just be pulling eyeballs out of heads just for what appears to be funsies is just a little out there. Yeah. The rest of it's the spoils of war and whatnot, but that's just like a dude just yanked an eyeball just because he was just like, oh, there's an eyeball there, yoink, mm -hmm. and then pockets it. I'm like, <laughs> That's pretty weird, by by any stretch of war. <laughs> We're a little weird crew. You're very weird. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, first priority, I think, is going to be to plop in the water and wash off some of the viscera. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes. If, that... if everything's dead. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 combat over. Well done, guys. Just give give yourselves a, a little pat on the back. Well done. Ooh. Yeah. I'll press to digitate some people. Uh, to clean them or... just yeah, to clean them. I'll do myself first, of course. Always do yourself first. Okay, so before, like, it, well, you guys look around and it seems like everything's quiet. You can see in the distance a lot of people holding their weapons in the air and cheering that they've uh, dispatched their particular groups of enemies that they were fighting. Does anyone do anything other than clean themselves after after the fight? Uh, I would like to pop my head back up above the water and have a look towards the ship that's out there and see if I recognize the sail on it. Or at least the flag, rather. That's the one. The... That's how you identify ships. Ooh, you've, I, should have, I should have thought of this. The flag off in the distance it is quite far away, so whatever the ship is, it's pretty well equipped in the sense of, like, you know, cannons and such. Uh, but you can make out that the... It looks like your standard, like, skull and crossbones, but there's only one, you know, like, femur bone that's parallel with the skull, and then the skull seems to have uh, fangs instead of, you know, just normal teeth. Okay, I mean, I... Are you asking if you recognize that? Yeah, I'm asking if I recognize that, yeah. Um... But also, I, like, I never made, like, I've never, I didn't go into enough detail in my character's backstory where I'm like, I know what the flag I'm looking for is. Um, yeah, so, that's like, fine. Could be anything. Do I recognize it? Yeah. Well, can you all give me a history check? 
And while we're looking at those, I'd also probably be rummaging the corpses that are near me. Uh, no problem. If you want to give me an investigation check as well, then. Okay, so 19, 18, 13, and 12. I'll say that uh, Fancyfoot and Otan recognize that the flag uh, is actually, you kind of see it and you think that's not possible because it's a flag from essentially this world's equivalent of a, of a fairy tale. You notice this as the flag of Lord Aethelred, um, who, as far as you're aware from the tales you've heard, is an immortal vampire pirate. Oh. Uh, who oh. sails around the natural plane, uh, raping and pillaging as he goes. Um, fun fact, raping and pillaging. Rape just meant to steal something from someone. So, just other fun fact. Um, but yeah, he, he he his ship is this mythical ship that's supposed to be faster than everyone's. Um, and he's had it for, you know, possibly centuries. No one knows what his motivations are. Like, people have tried to, like, you know, write in motivations as if they as if they knew what they were, but n no one really knows as far as everyone's concerned. He's just kind of evil and, you know, murders and steals and has a horrible that's time doing thing. it. Yeah, that's his thing. Yeah, that's his modus operandi. Kill and steal and amass a huge hoard of gold. Um, and just as a side note... Uh, Otan, let's say you find... Um, right, easy system I'll do for this, just so that people can remind me. The higher your investigation check, the higher the dice roll I'll roll for how much gold you get. So sometimes you'll get a lot, but it's always like a chance. So let's say a 19 is worth a d10, okay? That seems okay. fair. Nice, you got really unlucky. Uh, you find three golds worth of trinkets and doodads in various, yeah. you know, capacities. That's about what I expected. Just rusty stuff and junk, but oh, always worth a look. Can I bring my gold over from my previous character? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you spent it all between campaigns yeah. on, on, on booze, mainly. Okay. Uh, I spent but, a time stealing with that guy. But Ghibli, if you want to, if you want to keep uh, Burger's bag of fried meats, you can. <laughs> Because I think that's the jerky funny. bag. That, the jerky bag that sounds like there's a story there. The bag of jerky. It... Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, I, I remember now. I bought out a place of kebabs. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, <laughs> he didn't understand. Like Murlocs don't have a concept of gold. So when he gave him, how much? Didn't you give him like five golds worth or something? Um, yeah, something yeah. crazy. He he said five, and I gave him five. Yeah, <laughs> that was what made sense to him, and he meant like five copper for one kebab and so instead he bought five golds worth of kebabs i was a uh, happy murloc yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right excellent so yeah you guys uh have a, a moment to investigate and recuperate what do you guys do introduce well, i'm yourselves. looting the body so i'm busy for the first little bit yeah that's okay fine. uh i'm near oh sorry yeah, I was going to do the same thing. I'm near Fancy Foot, so I'll turn around and introduce myself. I'm I'm Giblig. Never seen a creature like you, but I like you, little guy. You're a good fighter. You're funny. I don't know why that guy was trying to kick you out of the bar. That's not what we do here. I'm quite sensitive about my height. <laughs> does, does he does he mumble that, or does he just say it? He just mumbles it on his breath. <laughs> Not fair. Did I hear it? No, your mouth. You're way away. You're really I would have had to it. move in here to loot him. So yeah, fancy foot. You hear it? He he just he he just says it under his breath. Uh, I guess she'll be like, well, sorry, bud, but you know that's just the way it is. People look at you, they give you a name, and that's how I ended up with fancy foot. That's what my crew calls me, at least. So that's what I'm known as around here. I only one foot. I don't know. Uh, you know, I never thought to ask fancy? that. Never thought to ask that. Okay. Maybe because there's only one of me? We have two feet. Do you have two feet? 
<laughs> I, I do. I do. Okay. I I haven't. Uh, despite the fact I can only see your your thighs, or maybe I'm hip height. Wait, how tall did you say you were? Like five six. Okay, so I'm like belly button height, probably. I can pat I you on the head. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't, but I could. <laughs> Just I see the intent. <laughs> He's like, you're thinking about it. <laughs> Everyone thinks about it. <laughs> I'm very slimy. It wouldn't be pleasant. <laughs> you also smell like rotting corpses now. I and your breath smell probably like... smells even worse. I do always smell like something questionable. Okay, and Emlyn, you're all washed up. I'm all washed up. Uh, yeah, hop out the water. Um, hey, you guys handle these handle yourselves pretty well. Do you know Do you know where they came from? What was that about? Looks like that ship over there. Some some necromancer imitating a dread pirate vampire. That I don't know how much you know about pirate flags, but that one that shouldn't exist. That's a fairy tale. That is some guy trying to scare us, trying to get us to leave the island. I mean, I'm looking for some specific pirates, but I've never seen that flag before. Well, I might be able to help you with that. Who are you looking for? Uh, been looking for some raiders that have been attacking my village nearby on the on the next Isle Nova. Um, they've been sailing with a flag. It's uh, crap. No, I actually need to come up with a flag. Um, uh, it's a black flag with a white cat on it. Before you say what the flag looks like, Fancy Foot is like, shit, did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, do I know about these cat pirates? Yes, you do. You've run into them one or, once or twice. They they call themselves treasure hunters, but they're not really much different from any other pirate crew. They're a little scummier, you know. They'll raid anywhere rather than, you know fancy places with people with too much wealth they'll just raid like, yeah. innocent villages and kind of things so i'd probably know them as well yeah okay so then i'll say oh yeah those guys you know we've already got a bad name but they give us a worse name they're out here just they're hurting the little guy no offense giblig i don't mean like that no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. i i don't know where they are right now they call themselves treasure hunters. All they're doing is killing innocents. Yeah, I mean, if you're on the sea, you're on the sea. You're risking your life. That's what you're signing up for. She's still drunk. Um, but just going to a village of people might be poor, might be just a normal village. As you continue this, uh, can you roll me a constitution saving throw, please? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, you... Uh, Fancy Foot is no longer speaking comprehensibly. Yeah, just like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, to you, Fancy, you're like delivering all kinds of excellent information. Everyone else is hearing, <laughs> uh, uh, the sea. <laughs> Those fucking guys, their, their lives, you know, fucking. Is this the drink, or did she get hit in the head? Maybe both. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I'm I gonna, see her I'm head, gonna but... sit down. That might be a good idea. You are now Ghibli. Needless height. to say, they've caused some trouble. <laughs> then... if, if anyone could actually have heard that, I would have cursed the booming voice in the sky dictating our lives. <laughs> didn't, didn't expect. It's for... Why the fuck are we fighting? Um, I turn to Oten. Yep. Because you've just sort of wandered up to us. Like, hi, I'm Giblig. That is Fancy Foot. I will um, I'm kneel Emma. down a little bit and say, I've never a corpse, though. <laughs> don't don't kneel down. That makes it worse. That makes it worse. 
Just, I'm six just, four, dude. <laughs> I I know. I will if I if I'm staring at your knees the entire conversation. I will deal with it. Just don't don't do that. Okay. He stands back up. Then I honestly and don't know why his hand I'm giving down. Giblig a height complex. This was not part of the plan. <laughs> I love it. It's great. It's quite fun though. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll avoid the low blows. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> I've I've still got. Most of a halberd left. My character won't. My character won't always be drunk. I promise. I'll I'll, I'll use prestidigitation <laughs> to clean off Giblig while I'm there. <laughs> uh, Giblig, for a brief moment, you're very dry, but then your natural mucus production kicks in, and your skin is once again slimy. Lovely. <laughs> he Ooh, smells like a fresh weird. swamp rather than fresh death, yeah. though. <laughs> And that the was... visual process of that, I imagine it being similar to Homer Simpson having a shave. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Ghibli, that was your halberd that was screaming. Oh, okay, good. I For, for, for a second, I was worried. <laughs> now it's fine. Now it's just your weapon. <laughs> okay. So while you guys are chatting along, uh, you see over from, like, towards the actual town because you're pretty deep into the dock so there's like a couple streets worth of like warehouses and stuff before um you know you get back towards like the the salted herring um but yeah a large group of uh heavily armored and well-armed guards you think come marching like towards you guys in particular one bloke steps out from the crowd he's in this sort of quite it looks very decorational compared to any armor you've actually seen. For one, it's purple. Uh, and it, from the looks of him, doesn't look like he actually did any fighting. But he gestures <laughs> to the four of you and says, You four, come with me. The mayor wishes to speak with you. Um, pass. Just kind of shrug and follow, I suppose. It is not a request, pirate. I All just right. <laughs> okay. raise an eyebrow and look and see what everybody else is doing. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll go. Excellent. Fancy Foot is going to be like on the walk there seemingly uncharacteristically kind of hiding behind um, Oten, the tall one. <laughs> uh, give me a stealth roll. Yeah, Oten, you do not notice that she is subtly hiding behind you. It's fine. <laughs> it is fine, because you don't notice. <laughs> 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 right, yeah, you guys are led through the main quarter of the town where most people are, and then there's this the whole the whole city or town or whatever is kind of tiered, so you guys are, are like almost constantly walking uphill. Um From what you can tell as well, the entire like lower half of the city has been pretty like damaged. It seems like the undead creatures at least in certain parts, got through the docks and managed to start doing damage to the, to the rest of the town. But it all seems to have been sorted now. So there's a lot of people like piling up undead <laughs> corpses and burning them and, and all of that jazz. But you guys get to what essentially amounts to a checkpoint um, with a couple guards standing out front. Again, not looking like they actually got involved in any fighting. Uh, they nod at the the man leading you, who's in the purple armor. They open this very large uh, iron gate, and you guys ascend into what is essentially the um, the rich quarter of the city. I'd then ask any of the regulars if you think your character has ever been to this end of town. So that'd be um, Otan and Fancy Folk. Mine. Yeah, I decided that she is from here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Mine that's has been hiding. here for... No, so... Sorry. sorry. No, go for it. Sorry. 
as you say, mine's been through here a few times on deliveries and work, but doesn't live here. Okay, that's absolutely fine. I don't live here anymore. <laughs> yeah, so you guys are led past lots of fancy houses, uh, basically a lot of places that have been completely untouched, uh, aside from the odd cannonball that didn't really do any much damage because all of its momentum was gone. Uh, and you were led up to a large mansion of, of sort, at which point, again, more guards that look very nonplussed by the arrival of this large escort. The escort itself diverts, and you are left with just the, the purple-armoured guard captain as he has introduced himself. Uh, as nothing more than the guard captain. He is not given a name. He, st he stops at two large like oak doors, looks at each one of you individually very... Um, what's the word? Like, sternly. And simply says, behave yourselves. And then opens the door and gestures for you to, to enter. I'll walk in. I'll, Reluctantly. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm probably short enough that nobody really notices me at the back, <laughs> but I'll go in. <laughs> Sorry, so was that everyone just walks in, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The room that you've entered into, it kind of resembles a church, as it were, like lots of pews, and then at one end there is like a dais for, um, or a parapet of some kind for like talking at. Sat on the just like a, essentially the edge of a stage is a quite old looking, even for, for his race, a quite old looking elf in lots of fine drapery, but he looks quite uh, distraught. He looks up and sees you all and gestures for you all to sort of come in close and have a seat. How tall are these seats? Can I fit actually fit in one? You can, well, they're pews, so you, you'd have to oh, do a bit of like in. lifting. But yeah, you can get in and sit down in one. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll sit down. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say I sit down. I was going to say, I walk up, but I don't sit down. I stay standing. And fancy foot in it, Emlyn? Well, I guess if he's standing, I'm standing. I don't know how compatible I am with a pew being mostly tail. You can sit kind of like <laughs> at, like sitting side saddle on a horse. So you can still sit. It's just, you know, there's a lot of tail still hanging off the Yeah, seat. okay, fine. I'll just sort of take up mo basically most of an entire pew. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I stand up on the pew so I'm like roughly everyone else's height? Of course you can. I was nice. going to say your little feet are kicking off the edge, but yeah, if you want to sit, you stand up. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Um, uh, yeah, once you've all taken position, I guess, the old elf looks at you and says, My guard captain informs me that you four held yourselves quite well in the ensuing attack. I, I got the shit slipped, slapped out of me, so. He raises an eyebrow and I... does not say anything. Okay. I mean, you did a... nibble a few, at least. Yeah, yeah. They didn't, they didn't taste very nice. Well, I mean, worse. <laughs> the I old, think. The old elf looks horrified. <laughs> 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 I should probably stop talking. Pray tell me, what flag do you ride under? Whom do you serve for your crew? It's... Personally, I'm between jobs. <laughs> uh, I serve no flag. I am not answering. I am pretending to not be here. <laughs> <laughs> People generally aren't comfortable having me on a ship with them. Something about the smell. I'm probably just saying all the wrong yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> 
your hal your halberd says, shh. Okay. <laughs> Make a good impression, man. Um, I sail under the flag of justice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good impression. Yeah. Otan would laugh at that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good flag. I'll sail under the flag of justice as well. I'll join your crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the elf, not being, not quite sure if he's being taken the mick out of, um, simply moves on with his uh, his sort of prepared speech. I, my daughter, has been taken by these creatures. I do not know how they got past the walls, but. Nevertheless, she is gone, and I have a crew already prepared, but I heard the skill in which you fought, and I thought it may be helpful in their quest to retrieve my daughter. I can assure you, you will be well compensated. That's all Otan needs to hear. <laughs> I'm on board, as long as the pay is good. Uh, um, he, he, unsure if you understood him or not, uh, elaborates and says, I would ask that you serve under the captain of such a schooner and uh, help rescue my daughter. I must decline. I have my own mission to attend to. Hey, I think that's the DM. Fan you don't really have an option. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just. I want. I want to see how you figure that one out because she is, has set out on her own mission here. So she's gonna need Fame. some convincing, right? You can, Fame. She, I was gonna say, oh. Fancy Foot finally speaks up and is just like, "I've got a crew." I can assure you, whatever uh, your quest may be, or whatever your crew regularly pays you, I can offer quite a larger sum more as motivation. He looks between Emily and Fancy Fur. I'll talk to them. Maybe I can bring it back. My mission really is important to me. I can't throw it aside. And for, for another cause. I can assure you this crew you would be joining, I can uh, persuade them to aid you in your quest. I imagine your quest would take you far and wide and well there is no finer way to do so than on a swift ship would we be sailing to the south how long would we be tied to this it depends on how long you take to rescue my daughter do we know but after we rescue at? her we're good you can return her to me and go about your ways Do you know where she's at? You would be following the ship you saw out in the, out from the docks attacking the island. All right, now that's interesting. Did, Sorry, did, should I still be Did we get drunk? any information about where that's going? You would Which have direction to, was it headed in? You would have to ask Captain Farrow. Excuse me. <laughs> I sneezed. I realize that I should probably still be drunk. Um, <laughs> Elven allergies are rough this time of year. You can you can uh, probably have sobered up by the walk. You can be yeah, she's... elves. If the voyage takes us in the in, in the direction I wish to go, then perhaps I could be, of, could be of assistance. Well, then I suggest you meet with Captain Farrow. Uh, I'm sorry. I I I suppose you would. Your. Uh, traveling types would need to know more specifics. I can offer you uh, uh, pray, young elf girl. You say you serve a crew, correct? Not you have a crew. I serve a crew, but you wouldn't get it. And perhaps you would one day dream of having a crew of your own. Perhaps your own ship. 
Well, it's it's what everyone dreams of, isn't it? Everyone in the seas. Well, the the schooner that you would be sailing on is the Lady Marie. I am sure you've he- heard of her uh, tales of um, her excellence and her speed and swiftness and her reliability in a storm. Perhaps, should you rescue my daughter and bring her back safely, I could offer the ship to you as captain. You would not be tied to working for me. You would simply own the ship. I love my daughter very much, and I would be willing to give anything for her. Fame of chasing down... What was that guy's name? Lord something? Ethelred. Fame of chasing down Ithered in my own ship. I'd miss the guys, but kind of hard to say no to that. And of course, you three would be well compensated in the same value of the ship. Uh, I'm game. Uh, I have I mean, nothing better to do. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to return home with some coin, but I can't, I can't make that my main priority. Well, again, I need to know where the ship sails before I join you. Of course. Well, as I said, please meet Captain Farrow. He is uh, a a frequent of the Salted Herring. Head there and. Ask for him. He should be waiting for you. We're along with his other crew. Is it still standing? Uh, the old man <laughs> clearly having no idea where the salted herring is. Clearly never having left the, the richer quarter of the city. Uh, he kind of just raises an eyebrow. Uh, got hit with sort a... of slightly hit by a cannonball earlier. Yeah. Yeah, one cannonball is not going to destroy a, an old tavern at the docks. Those things are built sturdy and have survived worse. Oh, fair but enough. is it open? There is that. You will have to find Probably out. My... Yeah. I mean, I'll stick around, I guess. Uh,. I don't have as cool motivations as everyone, but <laughs> I like being on boats. I mean, that's a very good reason. He, yeah, uh, just, everyone likes boats. Just to specify, I'm in the same boat. this guy is offering essentially the value of a prized schooner in gold for rescuing his daughter. Oh hell, no! Yes, I misheard this. I am, I'm, I don't understand gold very well, but I know that. Bigger amounts of it is good. Yeah, you'd know, you'd know a, thou- a thousand or two gold is 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 definitely enough to buy a lot. Yeah, I'm down. I'm on board. Excellent. My my guard captain will escort you out of the this quarter, and you may make your own way to the salted herring. He he gets up to leave. You guys have everything else to say? Not to him. Okay. Yeah, uh, he exits the room, and uh, shortly after, the, the doors that you entered with open, and you can see the guard captain waiting. How, how big is this pew I'm standing on? Do you mean, like, how wide it is, as in how many people it could see, or how, how, how far... How far is it off the ground? Like, two feet. Okay, so it's going to be a bit of a struggle getting down. I mean, <laughs> you could jump down two feet quite easily. I suppose, yeah. Let's hop down. Yeah. You make a satisfyingly loud clonk on the uh, the creaky old wooden boards. Nice. Do I <laughs> clang or do I plop? You clang. Because I'm very... Okay. I mean, your armor would clang. I think your feet would flop. He's, yeah, yeah, but um, his, his armor is all encompassing, basically. I got little booties. Oh. 
Yeah. Well, I'm following all the right. guard. <laughs> so you guys all just leave and uh, yeah, I'm gonna head up, head out, follow the guard. Yeah, you guys uh, are escorted through the the, the rich quarter and left at the checkpoint. The guard, the guard captain, uh, closes the gate behind you and kind of just watches you for a moment. I don't know the way. Way I don't. I, I, this is my first time in the town. Like, do you guys know the way back to it? I got it. Okay, I want to get out of. Fancy foot leads the way. Yeah. What were you saying? She's like, I don't want to get out of this part of town anyway. Okay, and you all are quite happy to follow Fancy Foot back to the Salted Herring. Uh, got no better options on the table, fine by me. Yeah, you guys arrive back at the Salted Herring in about ten minutes ish. Um, there's a lot of a lot of the people you saw earlier all nursing various wounds. Um, all seem to have been somewhat compensated by the local authorities because there all seems to be several of the same kind of little pouch with a few gold coins or whatever clinking around in it. So, various drinks all around. Couple bruises, couple missing limbs, all the usual stuff. Uh, and now that now the Salted Herring has a nice new skylight. Hey! Hey! Yeah! Is there anyone here that looks like they might be Captain Farrow? Anyone, po- anyone important looking? Yeah, but I know who that is. Captain Farrow? Uh, yeah, uh, fancy foot, you'd know who he is. He's essentially a very well-known and very well-paid mercenary for hire. Um, he is... He is a very handsome, blonded human um, who you know to be quite uh, arrogant and cocky. So you'd be able to recognize him in a crowd if you looked. I probably don't like him. Got it. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll point him out to everybody if he's here. Yeah, he is. He's sat in one of the, the corners of the tavern, sipping uh, a, a large glass of wine with his feet up on the table. He is dressed in all of the sort of quote-unquote pirate of legend kind of outfit long long coat that is thrown over his shoulders very nice leather boots a a cutlass at his side and a tricorn hat that is sat uh, sat uh, uh, on the table next to his his glass that he sips from frequently oh i'm gonna dm you my character's real name in case anybody in the town knows who i am okay no problem They might not, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's fine. So yeah, you guys are um, or fancy foot points out Captain Farrow, but uh, yeah, obviously as well, Fancy Foot's crew is calling out to her, asking, you know, with the usual like, "Where have you been?" and stuff. As well. She's just like holding up a finger, just like one minute, one minute, I'll be there. <laughs> they go back to drinking. <laughs> All right. I uh, guess we head over to Faro. Yep. Yeah, everyone's quite happy to do so. Yeah, I'll settle up nice and close to him. Who was the guy who was in charge? Was that with the that we gave us our mission? It was the mayor, right? Was this the mayor? Yeah. Was it this title, right? I'll give him a I'll give him a sly wink with one grotesquely huge eye. <laughs> <laughs> with your do you wink with your nictitating membrane or with the actual eyelid? Or one both? and then the other. <laughs> I love it. That's excellent. <laughs> just, just to let him know I'm I'm down for party. Yeah. Um he he seems momentarily phased, but then immediately lifts up and clicks his fingers a couple times and says, Barman! An an ale for my interesting friend here. <laughs> a ale again, is- a nice pint is uh, plopped down by a, a buxom barmaid who is v- he's very well, very clearly like paid to be nice to every customer, but she struggles with the <laughs> smile when looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she, I, she pops the, the... Sorry, what were you going to say? Can Murloc smile? Um, yes, but it involves a lot of teeth. <laughs> I smile back. <laughs> Excellent. She hurries away. 
<laughs> Pharaoh is, 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 is immediately like a sail, like before you guys get to sit down, a sailing Ghibli with like a million questions. Like, that armor is fantastic! What artisan crafted that? And how many teeth do you actually have? And why does your skin change color? What, what are you? I, 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 I'm flattered. I'm flattered. And I slightly subtle, a bit closer to him. <laughs> um, found the armor in a ship. Kind of all I know. I just, yeah. Uh, my teeth actually, the amount I have actually changes depending on what I'm eating. So if I eat something that's bony, I'm going to lose a couple, but they 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 grow back eventually. So, um, the the least I've had is two. I think the most I had was 60. God, that's, that's fantastic! My god! Excellent! Excellent! Downs his wine, clicks for another. <laughs> uh, I'll try and keep pace with this guy's drinking, but I am consuming a considerable amount of my own body weight in alcohol. <laughs> what, what? Since it's now become a weird um, thing that I've said... What colour do your stripes change when you drink booze? Uh, I'm going to say they they flush, like the the colour of the alcohol I'm drinking. Excellent. So they're now they're now a a beautiful piss yellow. Nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> quick quick question because I don't know. Mm -hmm. How do Merlocks urinate? Um. They don't. The mucus that they exude is most of their. Oh god. Like, is most of their like detritus. But Murlocs also tend to use a lot of what they consume. You know, they break it all down and it's all used for so that because Murlocs are like incredibly like energetic and fast, so the their metabolisms need to be really strong and high for them to make use of everything and be able to keep up the pace that they do. Because a merlock can run about as fast as a person, which shouldn't really make sense for something so small. Uh, so yeah, it's all broken down and anything that doesn't get used, yes, is 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 excreted as mucus on your, your lovely slimy skin. So even that's used because the slime is used to make you go faster in water and also, you know, to protect you. Nice. Um, but when I drink in real life, I need the toilet like all the time. So when Ghibli drinks, I'm just gonna slime everywhere. Yeah. Is he just yeah getting <laughs> moist and moist and you just moist? Get, you just, just get more shiny as uh, like a snail slick. crawling through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just a small puddle forming around him. And Ghibli, because your armor doesn't have any actual. Um, like nooks and crannies, it's it is all like one bound piece. You can sort of feel it pooling. Ooh, lovely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is Ghibli also doesn't know how to take his armor off, so How do you get it on? Magic. As a yes, long like very, very long story. Could, do, do I at least have like a hole that I can like open to let some of it dribble out? Yeah, the helmet. <laughs> The, 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 like, right, yeah. the like port where the neck is. Just for reference, because I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it specifically. But this armor is like unlike any armor you've ever seen. Just for reference for everyone, it is um, very bulky, even on such a small creature. Um, it has a large like port at the top, instead of where like a helmet would. He, you don't wear a helmet. This thing has essentially like a dome that is always like half up that covers a bit of, of, of Ghibli's face. And yeah, it seems to have better articulation than even leather armor, let alone a heavy piece of plate armor, which is what he's wearing. So once, once I've got a couple drinks down me, I'm gonna probably have to sit upside down for a minute or two to let it drain before turning it, back the right way. <laughs> it doesn't pull that quickly, I guess I'll say. Okay. Um, <laughs> Just need to lay down for a bit. <laughs> Hold him upside down by his ankles. But yeah, if, if someone picked you up, you would slosh a little, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Uh, Captain Pharaoh seems to be lost in conversation with Gibling. What do the three of you guys do? Hate to break up the biology lesson, but uh, the mayor tells us you're looking for a crew. Oh, of course. Uh, are you the uh, the mercs that the that I've been told I'm waiting for? Probably. I mean, we defended the dock, so that's the ones you're waiting on. Yes, yes, and 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 uh, d- 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 you, uh, elf, 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 elf girl. Uh, uh, f- fancy foot's the name, right? Mm-hmm. The, the the cobalt wing. Correct. Excellent Still ship. Haven't... Excellent ship. I've uh, I've come uh, I've come into uh, contact with you once or twice. Uh, good dealers, good dealers. Like your uh, like your moxie, like the like the wares you sell and how you sell them. Very excellent. Uh, heard you're uh, you're 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 good. You're good with a blade as well. Excellent, excellent, excellent. He very clearly doesn't leave room for anyone to talk but himself. She tries, but then yeah, finds yeah. out. <laughs> um, so, so we've got a we've got a veteran veteran pirate, a legendary hero, eh? eh? A sorry, what did you say you were? A giblig. Uh, yes, yes, I'm a giblig. And a gib a giblig with a oh, that's a. That's a nice halberd you've got there. I believe that's um, that's uh, that's deep whale bone. No? Yes, yes. Very nice, very nice, very nice, uh, very nice. Uh, wh- 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 whatever, 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 whatever. Halberd, halberd, halberd. And um, and you, a merfolk, on my crew. Excellent. It's just, it's fantastic. Can't believe I'm going to sail with a merfolk. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, Hold your fire. I haven't decided yet. I need to know where you're going. We're going. We're we're, sa- we're sailing after Lord Aethelred's ship, the the Crimson Claw, one of the most legendary ships of legend. Yes, excellent. Well, I have my own objectives. I've got my I, I've got my own voyage in mind, and <laughs> what, 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 your voyage what? is only going to work if I'm going if if I'm going the same direction as you. Well, well, I mean the uh, the the we're going to have to sail. To, to, to some local ports to find out where the, the where Aethelred's ship makes birth, but I th- I thought we'd I thought we'd sail south first to get some information from there. That works for me. That's that's the direction I need to be heading. Excellent. Gonna have a gonna have a merfolk with a lovely rack to uh to keep the crew smiling. Excellent, excellent. And uh and you, Mister Mister Onehorn. What a she sort of scowls at him over that last remark. What are you going to what are you, what are you what are you who are you? What do you what do you bring to the table? I am just a simple mercenary looking for work. Excellent. And I and I uh, uh, someone mentioned we've got some uh, some magic users. Which which are, which which are you? I'm guessing it's not a uh, it's not fa- uh, fancy feet here. She she's uh, she's known for a for a cunning wit and Cutting blades, and then Giblig. I'm guessing the halberd, and um, well, and he like literally, you know, like taps the armor with a with a knuckle, and it makes that satisfying kung kung kind of. I'm guessing you're not a not a magic user, other than your magic personality. Am I right? Uh, so, <laughs> I so, like this guy. So I'm guessing I'm guessing you two, you two got the got the magic fingers, yeah. A little bit, and he'll just press the digitation the table real quick. To do what? Clean everything off of it. It looks brand new. Oh, it's <laughs> your favorite thing to do? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Don't do that in front of the deckhands. You'll make them jealous. They've got to keep the got to keep the, the the lovely Lady Marie nice and shiny, right? They, you don't want to take their job. And you, lovely, buxom, beautiful mer woman, what do you do? And he gives you that kind of like the eyebrows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is Otan, or is he just real? Is Otan a woman, or is he just? Otan's drunk? a guy. Okay, so he's just drunk. No, he's talking no, to Emily. Yeah. Oh, why did I think Otan was the mer person? Nope, Emily. I can't keep anything straight. I, I, I'm a tiefling. That's fine. You're drunk. Mm. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? What I are you doing? If you keep if you keep talking to me like that, when I'm on your crew, I'm as capable a sailor as the next person. You'll treat me like anyone else. I, I treat everyone like they like I love them. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure you're one of the 
best sailors out there. We're all going to have a grand old time. And I mean, 3,000 gold pieces for a girl. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the kind of mission I'm involved in. We are not doing this if you're going to be like this. Hey! I mean, I'm sure you can, uh, you can enjoy my lovely company if you're getting my ship afterwards, eh? I'm retiring after this. The Lady Marie is a fantastic her. ship. Treat her like the rest of us. I am! I treat you all like you're all brilliant. <sighs> that size in character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, look. To, to get serious for a moment. I've heard you're good, and you handled yourself well against the undead. That's not common. Undead don't attack much, so people tend to be scared of them. I need the best, and I've been told you guys might just be that. So, if you're going to help me take down a legendary vampire pirate, I'll treat you however, it want, however you want to be treated. All right? I think that's fair. I'll sail with you because it's convenient for me. But you better watch your attitude or you'll wind up with a knife in your back. Aye, aye, Captain, eh? Works for me. Fantastic. And, uh, anything else you're bringing to the table? Any information? Any, uh, fancy footwork, as it were? Mm. That was my crew's nickname for me. Well, what do you want to be called on our crew? Just call me Cecilia. We'll work it out. Cecilia. Excellent. 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 Cecilia, it is. And we got Giblig. Yeah, Giblig. Yeah, you're my man. You're my main man. You're, you're going to be You're gonna be famous by the end of this, I promise. And uh, you, Tiefling, what's your name? You can just call me Otan. 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 Ooh. Sounds sounds familiar, but uh, I've heard, I, I hear a lot of names. And you. And you. What, what would you prefer to be called? Madam. Ma uh, Madam Merfolk. My name's Emlyn. 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 Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, all right. All right. Well, we're sailing off tomorrow. So if you want to, if you want to get one of the nicest rooms in the tavern, you can. It's on me. Don't worry. And then, uh, just head over to the, to the Lady Marie in the morrow. Eh? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, sure, I'm down. Excellent. And I'm guessing you'll want separate rooms, or are some of you, uh... Separate rooms will be fine. Separate rooms. Separate rooms. Definitely oh. separate rooms. Separate rooms. If you, I'm fine with a puddle, usually, but I'll, I'll take a bed. Oh, poor maids in the morning, having to clean that up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Well then, he uh, he stands up, very shakily, downs that last bit of wine. I've got to, I've got to talk to a man about a game of uh, three dragon ante. Gonna win me some extra, some extra coinage for the journey. If uh, if you have any questions, you know where the Lady Marie is. I'll be there once I've cleaned these folk out of their money. And he uh, saunters off. And he clearly, he even walks like he thinks he's the best. You don't know Once how he, he leaves. manages it. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Once he leaves, uh, Cecilia is just going to be like, it's only for a few months. It's only for a few months. I hate this guy so much. <laughs> I think he's great. <laughs> <laughs> Four <sighs> pints deep. <laughs> I'm this hungover. I'm pissed off. What was Otan saying? Oh, just reminds me of half the pirates I've had to sail with, unfortunately. Well, I can't say that there aren't others like him, but look forward to getting to know you all. You can call me Fancy Foot if you want. He can't. Cecilia, mm -hmm. Fancy Which Foot. Which would you prefer? While we're at this island, fancy foot. On the sea, I don't care. Sounds good to me. Sounds good, uh, fancy foot. I 
am going to go tell my crew that I'm getting them a better ship. Okay. Even though she, like, she works for them, she calls them her crew because mm, that's, that's how it works. It's interesting. Uh, I'll message you afterwards about it because I think it's interesting that Fancy Foot is doing it to get them a ship. Mm, that's interesting. Um, okay, so Giblig, Otan, and Emlyn, what are you guys going to be doing for the for the rest of the evening? Well, I'm uh, good. Did they say something about a bar tab? Uh, he, um, as far as you're aware, uh, Captain Farrow has said it's on him. Alrighty, Giblig, let's have a drink. Yeah. We'll one after all that. <laughs> I love I mean, and I'll I love just it. say I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I'm going to go shopping for supplies for the trip cool um i already love emlyn and ghibli's relationship even though they've only shared like two words i think it's a, no, I'm, I'm... i think this is a kindred fishy spirit between fishy them. spirit <laughs> definitely something fishy going on <laughs> okay so we'll deal with Otan, I mean... uh afterwards sorry what were you saying ghibli oh, i was just gonna make a terrible joke go for it well i mean technically we are different genders, however, my genitals are encased in iron, so nothing can happen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like superior chastity belt plus one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know who Ghibli wants to sleep with more, Emlyn or Captain Pharaoh. We'll find out. <laughs> um, my money's on Pharaoh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so Otan disappears off to go shopping. Fancy Foot returns to her crew, which we'll we'll deal with as well. Um, what are what are Ghibli and Emling doing if they're if they're just having a drink? Are they doing anything else, or are they just sitting having a chat and having a drink? I'll trade fishy stories for them. Excellent. Sure. <laughs> roll roll me a d twenty, uh, John, or Ghibli, I should say, because you both got John. Fall. <laughs> your stories are reasonably interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Better than I expected for a four, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice. I'm a nice DM. I'm, you know, I'm, I'll give it out where I can. I. Eh? Um. All right. So, fancy foot. What's the name of your capitan? A good fucking question. I was just going to call him Captain. Um... We can just call him Captain. That's fine for now. Uh, yes, you return to your group and El Capitan ha is 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 there. He's he's a quieter man compared to his crew, but uh, he he gives you he gives you a a nod as you return to the to the group. Long story short, Getting roped into something I don't have much of a choice about doing. But I'll be gone for a few months. But I'm coming back. I am getting us a better ship. I know we love the Cobalt Wing. I know it has carried us to farther than we ever expected it would. But the mayor is offering me the fucking Lady Maria. Is that his name? Lady Marie. Lady Marie. If I go save his stupid daughter, if I put up with Captain Pharaoh for months, then we get the finest ship we've ever seen. Captain Cle is clearly like... Walk... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, Will you still welcome me back after that? I know we don't take too kindly the leaving, but seems like a good exception for me. Uh, the Captain... Clearly mulls it over, homing an hour in for a while. Why don't you want to keep the ship for yourself? Start you your guys own are crew. like your family to me. Who else am I gonna find? Fair enough. If you're offering the Lady Marie, I'll quite happily give you a couple months leave. You got me off of this stupid island. I'm going to get us anywhere in the world we want. All right, all right. Fair enough. Give my regards to Captain Farrow. Now be off Thank with you. Thank you very you. much. 
guys know where you're heading? I could send you a letter saying how we're doing. We ain't decided yet. I'll get I'll get a messenger to you tomorrow. I'm guessing you're sailing off nice and sharpish. Mm-hmm. First I wasn't gonna go, but uh you know, when the government asks you to do something, well that's why we have a crew to defy them, but when it's just one not as easy. I'll get a message to you tomorrow before we before we sail off. You'll know where we're going. See you in a few months. He nods and goes back to drinking. And uh, your crew all, you know, pats on the back, hands shaking, goodbyes and all that jazz. Okay. Yeah, I feel like she would be, like, relatively high-ranking, but, like, some kind of, like, officer, but not, like super super high you know yeah that's fine um what does fancy foot do uh now that she has been dismissed as it were i don't think she's gonna have more drinks because she hung over and feels bad but if they're you know gambling and doing anything she's she's gonna hang out with them you know one last night saying goodbye all right yeah that's fine all right otan so you said you're off shopping yeah yep So it's a little later in the day, so a lot of the more quote-unquote legitimate shops have uh, started to pack up and close. But obviously this is the docks. You can find something to buy at any point uh, during the day. So what is it Otan is looking for? Mostly just some healing potions, kind of like I'm going to be in some scraps in the very near future kind of supplies. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much healing potions are in this world, but... Uh, and I don't know if I can afford them. <laughs> I usually go with healing potions just being like a gold. I know they're like way more expensive in like the manual, but I just say like a gold. Um, that it's more that they're harder to come by than you know actually expensive. So if you give me an and I would have a few connections that might be able to help me with that as well. Yeah, if you want to give me a persuasion check with advantage, then. Okay. I'll just roll it twice. Okay, so an eight. I'll say you could, you could, you could probably scrape together maybe. And, th- oh, with advantage. Yeah, yeah. A second. Uh, well, oh, I it already, it yeah, I already rolled it. Um, so I'll say that with the eight and the four you can probably scrape together two healing potions from people that actually sell healing potions because a lot of them are, you know, snake oil and all that jazz. You can probably scrape together two if you want to buy two. Okay, I'll I'll take two. Yeah, anything else? Mm. No, I have plenty of rations and all that fun stuff, so. Okay, excellent. So does anyone do anything else for the remaining evening? No, I got nothing. No. No. Nope. Nope. Okay, cool. You guys rest up um, in your nice, cushy tavern bedrooms. Uh, They are actually quite good quality, even for uh, a dockside tavern, probably because it is one of the most popular uh, taverns on the docks. So it, it sees a lot of money. But yeah, you guys rise and shine. Do you guys head to the Lady Marie together or at different times? Uh, off early, because I don't. I don't think I would sleep that much. Yeah, that's. Fine. I will head. I will head there when I get up. If there are other people, I will go with them, but I won't wait for them. Mm-hmm. So Ghibli's off and off early. Otan, Emlyn, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I kind of had a similar vibe, but probably just sort of see if anyone's around. If they're not. Yeah, you see, you see Fancy Foot, I assume, eating some brekkie. Breakfast time. Breakfast. Ghibli, your breakfast was delicious. Nice. <laughs> oh, Sam, yeah. what are you doing? Um, I'd probably go tell some people where I'm going and then head to the docks. Cool, no worries. So, Ghibli, you arrive early at the Lady Marie. Even ask uh, someone who's not around a lot of ships or the ships you are have been around, have been mostly made out of scrap wood and bone. Um, you, It looks like a nice ship. Seems like it, it should be a ship that's that's considered cool. Um, it's a schooner, so it's, rel- it's relatively 
small compared to the larger flagships and stuff. It's meant for speed. It's got several cannons on both sides. The wood seems immaculate, almost as if it's impervious to the weather of the of the uh, of the sea. A schooner, as far as I'm aware, has two large sails and one small sail. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, two major sails, like you would see on a ship, and then one uh, one of those sails that's sideways for catching turning winds and stuff like that. Yeah, it's an it's a nice ship. There, it's already being loaded up with various supplies. It looks like this has been happening throughout uh, the morning. Various crew, mostly human, you've noticed. Uh, but there's the there's a couple uh, odd creatures. Or, well, I say creatures. Um, you know, uh, people of other races and stuff like loading up the ship. You can see Captain Farrow is like milling about on the main deck. Uh, while you're waiting, though, or just watching this kind of, like, crew uh, go about their work, you hear next to you a sort of <coughs> noise. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, I turn to look at the noise. Yeah. You notice there is a crab about the size of you with a box on its back. You seem to be in its way. Oh, um, I apologize to the nice crab. Man, <laughs> uh, woman, it's difficult to tell on a crab. Sorry, uh, and shuffle out the way, yeah. slightly awkwardly. The crab, um, the crab, essentially, if a crab could saunter, saunters past you onto the ship. So it seems that your ship it... has. Mm, go ahead. Is it a sexy saunter? It. I mean, you know. I mean, it depends on Giblik's opinions on crabs. Um, I. Uh, I don't think. Ghibli has a sexuality. He's just sort of trying everything to see if something works. <laughs> uh, then yes, we'll say it's a sexy saunter. Okay, um, I'm done. <laughs> it, but yeah, this this ship, for whatever reason, seems to have a giant crab. Uh, and everyone yeah. else seems to pay it absolutely no mind. Why not? Uh, as the crab enters the... or gets onto the main deck, Captain Pharaoh spots you. It's like Gibbling, my man. Look at you, ready and raring to go. That's the kind of eagerness I can respect. Get on up here. So I, I waddle up the board thing. All right. He he pulls he pulls a um, let's say a la very large even for a dragonborn a large dragonborn. So I was like, come on, 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 this is Ra, my first mate. He's uh, been on my side for more adventures than I can count. Ra, this is Giblik, and I'm excited to have one last fantastic adventure with him. Ra, Giblik, Giblik, Ra. Ra Pleasure. like extends his hand to shake uh, towards you, but he, with how tall he is and how short you are, there is no way you're reaching that hand to shake. Not even if I jump. Oh, I mean, if you jump, you could hang on to his hand and shake it that way. Uh, yeah, let's give that a try. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> no, actually, give me an athletics check. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, d20 plus strength modifier. If you're not proficient with it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you jump up, grab the hand, somehow manage to shake it without just, you know, swinging yourself around and hop down and Ra simply just and then walks off. Doesn't talk much. Never, never has. Don't know why. I don't mind. Let me do all the talking if you know what I mean. So it's very clear that Captain Farrow is like this all hours of the day. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I, I, I got a mentally prepare myself before I follow him. Yep. So, Giblig, what do you want to do on my ship while we're while we're sailing? What can you bring to the crew? Um You a good well, cook at all? Uh depends on your taste. 
Well, which is another way of saying no. Um, <laughs> I've heard that the sc the scullery cook is looking for a uh, for an assistant, and you're just the right man, I think. But but hey, if you want to do something else, you just give me a shout. I'll do whatever, but I mean, I, I should warn you, I, I eat dead things, like very, very dead things, and have no sense of smell. So, I don't think cooking is going to be the thing. I can, however, swim very fast and breathe underwater indefinitely. So, maybe something more fishing related? Captain Farrow kind of stares at you for, for, for like a few seconds, just... It's it's unclear if he's like turned off or shut down or if he's thinking. It's very unclear. Um, and then he just kind of slaps his hands together and says, "We'll find something." And then he wanders off. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing the swimming doesn't help then. Well, he's wandered off, so. Yeah, fair enough. Um... So you can ask. So your halberd says probably not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I like alone on the ship. No, the, there's the, there's, like, the... there, there's crew milling about. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna wander around, explore like the layout of the ship. Yeah. So it's basically got one main deck, um, and then it's got the the lower deck where the, the cannons are, and then it's got the ballast right at the bottom. So it's essentially three floors. Um, but the deck with all the cannons, because it's a small ship, also happens to be where all the hammocks and stuff are for people to sleep in, which are all just kind of stacked up on top of each other. Um, and there, the main deck, is, as it's referred to as the poop deck, is, yeah, where yeah. there's also some smaller artillery cannons for minor engagements and then you've got the 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 aft or front of the ship there is point of order the poop decks the bit at the back of the ship the raised bit that forms the top of the cabin there you go then we've got that instead so you've got sorry i know too much about ships no that's fine just, like, not a lot but bits i know bits about ships no that's fine <laughs> don't worry about it so yeah you've got the front of the ship where just navigation or anything like that happens and then you've got the poop deck at the back with captain pharaoh and the navigator and then obviously underneath the the poop deck is the captain's quarters and that's a, that's about it you know there doesn't seem to be any major cargo that's being transported all of the supplies that are bringing on are supplies for the journey not for like trade or anything like that but yeah all of the crew just kind of pays you no mind Fair enough. Um, go back up to the top of the ship. Just, I think I'll go for a swim. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. Yeah, that's fine. So, you, yep. Uh, you go for, for a swimmy swim. And give me a... Give me an animal handling check. Hey. Cool. All right. And uh, during all this, Otan, Fancyfoot, and Emlyn, you guys all arrive at the ship. By the time you guys have arrived, most of the the loading is done. Uh, but yeah, you get the same description of the ship that I just gave to to Giblig. It is definitely a quality ship. You know, it it, it definitely distinguishes itself from other ships on the dock there is a reason this ship is essentially a ship uh of you know legend with tales told about it damn <laughs> it's fancy we, we get on the ship yeah i'm probably like investigating it a bit more just like walking around just like holy shit it's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Emlyn, anything specific? Yeah, this is a nice ship. Okay. I've never seen one like it. So yeah, uh, much to I imagine Emlyn and Fancy Foot's degree, uh, Captain Farrow does notice you and hops on over. Hey, there they are, the remaining mercenaries. Hey, hey, hey. Have a good night on my 
on my gold coins, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of drinks, lots of sleeping. Eh? I slept very well, thank you. Fantastic. And you too. How did you have a night, I bet. Yeah. M me? He says you too, so Otan and Fancyfoot, yeah. Oh. Pretty good. Yeah, I got to, got to say goodbye to those I've been sailing with for a little while. Had a good time. Ready for action. Well, yeah, I mean, I bet you've been sailing for a long time. The Cobalt Raiders, very exclusive with who they let in. So you're going to be a, a welcome addition. I imagine the crew is uh, is going to have a, a great time getting to know you. So, a little bit of information. I'm sure you can hand it over to Giblig. The The crew's not a big one. There's about ten of us, including myself and uh, Mr. Krabby over there. We don't really have a name for him, so we call him whatever we want. There's Ra, my first mate. And then we got the navigator. We just call him Navi. He does his job, gets us where we need to go. The rest of them, they man the cannons. They do all the talking. Aye, aye, aye. Talking with our blades. So, you three. Well, let's let's start with you, Emlyn. What do you want to do on my ship? What do you need me to do? Hey. There's open jobs everywhere. This is a schooner. We've got a small crew, so there's always room for an extra pair of hands. I mean, I know my way around a ship. Does merfolk tend to? Can you cook? Oh, I've had enough of a lifetime of cooking. I came here to get away from cooking. I can cook. You don't want to eat my cooking. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, then you can go help the cannon crew down below if that's, uh, if that's all right with you. That will work for me. Excellent. Gets me away from you. Otan! Otan! My man, Otan! What do you want to do on my ship? I can run anything from stem to stern. All right, I've then. sailed most of my life. How about navigation? Okay. All right, head up to, na <laughs> head up to Navi and have a chat with him. It'll give you a, a bearing for where we're going, and you two can have a chat about how we're going to get there. All right? He wanders off <laughs> to Nappy. Captain Faro is very clearly not used to people not replying, so he just kind of... Uh, uh, uh. Fancy foot! Fancy foot! Fancy foot! Mm -hmm. What do you want to do on my ship? Or should I say, your ship? Uh, what was open? I don't know very much about ships, despite playing a pirate character. <laughs> um... Basically, just any position. Yeah, any position you can think of. Basically, saying that anything's open. So you've got cannonade crews um, who maintain cannons and obviously fire the cannons. You've got navigation, and then you've got general, just like making sure the ship is sailing properly by maintaining the sails, manning the uh, crow's nest, blah blah blah, all of that jazz. I probably would have been better at maintaining the stuff because I have proficiency in water vehicles. I also do. Um, uh, so I mean, I, guess... I also do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a pirate theme thing. We gotta all do that. I mean, I mean, that was a little tweak on my part because it was like, you have a proficiency in land vehicles. I'm like, I'm a fish. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, it's more just flavor. We'll decide. Yeah. We'll decide that kind of stuff uh, between sessions. I could do sails or crow's nest or something yeah i want to hang out in the crow's nest all right you hop on up there we'll get the bear in soon and we'll be off all right and you said you're all good at combat is there anything you guys need any materials i need to send for for your magic abilities good question looking at the others uh, i don't have magic abilities i do and i need to look at what i need um Beans, I need beans. Beans! I'll get beans. Some, I'll get some beans right beans. on over. <laughs> uh, also, like I don't know quite how how uh, ubiquitous it would be in this world. Um, I apparently need mistletoe for one of my spells. All right, how, how often do we stumble across mistletoe you, on the ocean, or do, do you, you want to sub arcane, it for something else? Do you have an arcane focus? Uh, I have a druidic focus. Then you don't need those. That oh. takes the place of material components. Oh, as does it? They, oh, okay. Yeah. As, long don't, as, they, well, no, as long as they don't cost money. It can't take the place of those. 
I Still did not know this. Beans. Okay, It'll cool. be hilarious. <laughs> uh, well, I got gust of wind, which needs a legume. And I was like, okay, somehow I need to pick up some beans on my journey. <laughs> yeah, as long as it doesn't have a gold price listed, the focus uh, okay. can take the place. Yeah, it's mostly, oh, ri it's mostly that. Cool. rituals that require components. Okay. I'd noticed a lot of the spells on the list needed materials, and I was almost kind of like strategically picking things. I'm like, how, how on earth am I even remotely going to get hold of any of these things? So I was like, I'll give you over for things that don't need materials by and large. Mm -hmm. I did not yeah. know about the focus at all. I don't know who plays with that. Like, who? What spellcaster doesn't have a focus? Like, yeah, who it's, uses that? It's it, it, it's real weird. D and D's weird. All right. Uh, yeah, Captain Faro kind of gives you the directions you all need to go, uh, and then excitedly kind of claps his hands together and he's like, "All right, we're off to go catch a legend." Uh, and we will leave it there for this week. Um, I hope you guys had a fun first session establishing your characters and establishing the world that we live in. Um, and next week, well, ne next session, whenever we manage to get it done, um, we'll be ready to chase down a legend, chase down your first clue. Because the way the system's going to work is there's two systems that I'm going to finish creating for the next session and that's the the ship itself ship maintenance a lot of that will be handled by captain Farrow until you have your own ship um but there will also be essentially this side quest of building up clues and once you've got enough clues you can either once you've got all of the clues you'll know exactly where to go but you can make deductions based on the clues you already have um and try and catch Captain Aethelred or Lord Aethelred sooner rather than later. Okay. What job did Ghibli end up doing on the ship again? No one knows. No one knows. Okay. Gib I'm just having a good time. Ghibli's okay. job is to be himself. <laughs> He's a mascot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just strap so into my, the <laughs> my character trajectory has gone wildly off in a completely strange direction. It always does. With any character yes. you create, I think it's just a habit of D and D players. Fair enough. Yeah, I was expecting um, Cecilia to be uh, a little more upbeat and adventurous, but she hates this guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Captain Farrow? He's great. He had me really wanting to cast hideous laughter on him a few times. <laughs> Captain Farrow's great. Don't be silly. All right. Um, I mean, literally, like my one. Of, I, I don't know that I fleshed out my character probably as well as other people, but definitely one of the traits I had was like I get pissed off when people are misogynist. I'm like, so okay, cool, great. This is gonna work great, great, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll stop the stream.